It's the season to curl up, sleep in, and get cozy, which means you can't go wrong giving comfy gifts for the holidays. Who doesn't want something comfy? I do. And with Purple, you can give the gift of comfort and great sleep to everyone on your list. Purple is a sleep company that's been innovating comfort for over 15 years with their proprietary Purple Grid technology. Purple's best-selling Harmony Pillow is made with their signature grid and provides absolute airflow. It's the perfect gift to help keep the hottest of heads cool. Wrapping a mattress in Purple's silky soft breathable sheets will have every sleeper wanting to hit the snooze button even more. Whether you're working in an office or at a kitchen table, sitting all day no longer has to be a pain in the butt. Purple seat cushions offer no pressure support and keeps you comfortably cool. And for the little ones, Purple's Kid Collection has all the essentials to help them dream big. They'll wake up feeling merry and bright every day having slept on their super soft, moisture-wicking kid sheets. Your small sleepers won't stir at night when they have the cradling support of the kid's pillow, which is made with the same grid technology. Purple is a wonderful product. I like to sleep. And if I can sleep on something that keeps my head cool and allows me to sleep better, I recommend Purple. Give the gift of comfort and great sleep with Purple. Go to purple.com slash bob10 and use promo code bob10. That's bob10. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash bob10. Promo code BOB10 for 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash BOB10. Promo code BOB10. Terms apply. Bob Saget here, and I, I think I have too much light on me, but I'm, I'm going to keep it. If you're watching the YouTube, I got a light. I could look like that or like that. And if you're just listening, uh, you don't give a crap about the light. It's Bob Saget's here for you, and I got a special guest I always say that, but this is Jason Sudeikis, who I think everybody's in love with. Um, Man, woman, child, mammals, any kind of animal. Uh, He is just one of my favorite comedy people. I just, uh, and I am this unbelievably religious fan of Ted Lasso. Um, And there's two more years of it coming up, which is fantastic on Apple TV. And if you haven't watched it, stop listening to this right now. And just binge all Ted episodes of Ted Lasso because it's one of the best shows I've ever seen. It's up there. It's one of my favorite shows. That's a lot to say. Maybe you'll think I'm a fool. I'm not. Um, I'm not because I know how to fix a tire. And if I cut myself, I can stop the bleeding. Ted Lasso is one of the best shows on television right now. And uh, there's going to be more of them, which is just amazing. And he's done so many great movies that are just really special um, and funny. And we'll be talking about them and his, his tenure or eight year on Saturday Night Live, um, all, all the stuff he's done. Uh, you know what to do. You rate, review, you subscribe to this podcast and uh, you want to do that and you want to download it. You can download it. That's a good thing. I, that's new. You know, you can download it. <laughs> that's new. It's the past 20 years. Anyway, uh, the other thing is, there's a phone number up there. You can call that, and I'll be calling you guys sometimes. Uh, either on Twitter, I'll announce it when I'm going to call. Uh, and I'll be doing it soon, very soon, because the holidays are upon us. So I want to connect to some of you people out there, you nice people. And uh, as we get to the end of this 2020, it's wonderful to have somebody so positive and so wonderful. Uh, I know, I'm just a gloaty asshole, but I can't help it. It's how I feel, okay? So I'm not just fluffing people. I just, I love this guy. He's just a bright, shining guy. And he's got a giant heart, and it comes out in his comedy. And Ted Lasso, let's welcome in. I'm going to admit him into my Zoom room right now. Here's Jason Sudeikis. Oh, here we are. Here we are. You gotta hold that mic the whole time. I don't know. I could have it in a stand. It's just I have it recording in a podcast board, so it sounds like I'm doing a real thing. I got you. Makes it official. You, is this you, is my sound all right? Yeah, it's good. You're out of sync. I don't know why. Maybe I'll do that. You like that better? If it's off to the side, does it look like a penis though? 
I, I'm just, I'm just thinking your comfort. It's, it, I got, I got, I got no skin in this game. You know, it's just, it's just me. You know, I want you to be able to gesticulate and clap. You know, yeah, that, you know what? You're right. And I got 90 pages I won't be using. It's like Craig Ferguson. Yeah. He just rips yeah. up his cards when the interview comes out because he doesn't want to learn it. <laughs> I never got to do his show. It was so, it, the, the, his, his booker was like, nah, I don't think him and, I don't think Jason and Craig would, would hit it off. <laughs> no, you'd be perfect. Like, what? You'd be uh, absolutely perfect. I, you're, I, you're a nice, you're an incredibly well, nice you know. person. You're, you're, you're fee associative. Well, you go with wherever the ball's thrown. No, I'm not trying to Ted lasso you in, but, um, yeah, yeah. My grandmother. So don't blow you were, it. Don't blow this. It. No, I'm not going to. This is the room that you were in when I watched the, uh, the whole cast of Ted lasso, talk is that correct yeah this yes. is your set that is this correct is your yeah, quarantino this is the, set this is this is our piet de terre if i'm using, if i'm saying that correct this is this is the the office in in the the house that we uh we have here in silver lake that yeah that i've been in you know olivia used at the beginning of the year to prep her movie that she's shooting now and then i've been in here since she was given an office so, <laughs> you know and it's where i play it's where i play video games Oh, it's where man. I've, you know, I've, um, you know, me and my son have played, you know, lots of Spider-Man on, on that television. And so that's, and know, that TV is on soccer right balls now. in here. What it, do you have soccer balls? Yeah, in there? It's, it's, yeah, we got a few. Yep. There, you get trophies one. on the top there. That's a nice ball. And you got trophies. Those behind are, those, you? Yeah, those are. Yeah, that's those are all Olivia's for her film Booksmart. I see. Here's one of my favorite things. Are we have we started by the way? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, you know, I'll, like, yeah. I'll, I'll um, probably start. You know, right before, uh, right after the trophy moment. <laughs> yeah, okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> how, how are you, by um, the way? Are you doing good? Are you okay? You're you're in quarantine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your life is yeah, insane I mean, for everybody. You know. Yes. Yeah. No, but I'm 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 doing all right. But um, yeah. I mean, it's it's you know we're all everyone's on their own journey here you know even even yeah. within i think you know unions and and you know teammates and yeah it's 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 a whole to do i cannot wait until 2020 is hindsight oh my Bob. grandmother i this is the worst fucking year uh, of our lives so far so far yeah 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 i, no, I knew I, there was going to be germ warfare but i just didn't know the, like the toxic avenger i didn't know the whole thing would happen at once you know mm -hmm. the, that's all of it. It's just a perfect lightning storm of that shit. Crazy. Yeah, it really is. That really shit is, crazy yeah. will never mean the same thing. No, you're not like now. Yeah, you're like bad shit crazy. It's like, oh, don't don't let it sneeze on you. Like, don't don't eat that bad shit crazy. I'll take a <laughs> bite of it. Well, they're saying it's not wet bit. bats now. They they say it was the, a lab. Situ I don't know. I don't know what to believe anymore. I just I didn't. I don't, we don't we don't care even. We just want to get through this and. Give me yeah. a vaccine. I'll, I'll let them inject it into my penis. I don't care. Yeah. I mean, where else would you put it? That's what that's I would the, do. That's the only place I can find veins on my body anymore. You, know? <laughs> you become that. No, you're, you're yeah. slim. I you're appreciate you noticing. Thank you. Yeah. yeah, you know, I yeah. Think you're <laughs> always been svelte and much more veiny now than you used to be. You're not vain. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, in fact, did we meet at the Amundsen Theater is that accurate? Were we see, not? We're, yes, at the theater downtown LA. Were you there with Fred Armisen, seeing some show? Uh, no, you're 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 almost right. We we saw a heck of a show, and we it, we met at um, UCLA at Royce Hall. Oh, okay. For Bernie Brillstein's memorial. Oh, that is where we met. Oh, crap. and that's no, no, no. I mean, the fact that you remember Fred was there, like like. Um, I'm, you know, like, I mean, that night, you know, Fred and I have known each other for years at that point at SNL. I can't remember what year that was. Uh, and, and I remember, you know, we were both, I think, both staying at the a place called the Pally House yeah. in 2010. Yeah. yeah. And, and Fred was like, hey, do you want to drive together? Sure. And then we're sitting in the car and I look over at him and I'm just like, this is, like, this is so funny seeing sitting in a car with you like i mean like him driving it's like when you see like <laughs> it's like when you see a muppet like riding a bike when you see kermit's full body i was like what is going on and, and you just sort of see like the way you know the way he handles things like he had like a little razor and i do the same thing especially when i have facial hair that like right. he had like a little razor that if, if like he had a, a a hair 
he, that he would just need to like in his center console. He's like, yeah, I just had that just in case like a little grow hair. Otherwise, I'll just be messing with it the whole time. But then, the yeah, we Memorial. Went, you don't want to be doing that. Well, yeah, we don't are, want that at all. And Marty um, Short was hosting. He would have called him out. It was amazing. Marty, Martin Short had that killer joke at the at the beginning. He goes, I, I, me I remember Bernie said to me, kid, I'm going to get you a gig at Royce Hall if it kills me. <laughs> oh, God. That night. Was, and, that I mean, was it. And Kermit was actually saying Rainbow Connection at the end through a, yeah. a, a, a thin curtain. It was. Oh it was and it, I, it, I love Bernie a lot. Yeah, um, he was amazing. He was amazing. Yeah. He represented my Uncle George, you know, uh, early in his career before uh then brad gray took 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 over but I, but bernie was always really really nice to me the first time i met him was when uh when they were casting for the martin short show and they came through chicago the second city and i introduced myself my, my uncle george Wynn, you know played norm on i, <laughs> that's I, my, I, I that's love my, your uncle yeah i mean yeah, i know him a long time yeah he's a, he's a kick kick butt uh man artist and, and human being and, and uncle um and he uh <laughs> And I just introduced myself, you know, as, as, you know, hi, I'm, my name's Jason. I'm, you know, George Wynn's nephew. I don't think I auditioned for it. I can't really remember, but, um, oh, great to meet you. I love you. I love you. I love George. So good to be back here in, you know, like in Chicago. It's been, it'd been a long time, but he, I, there's so many quotes he has that I still, that I bring up all the time. Like one of my favorites that keeps coming up, uh, when we've been doing press for the, 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 our, our show is, um, that, um, what is it that um stars don't make television television makes stars i was like one yeah. of his axioms and yeah you know uh it's one of the one of the fun things of our program is like you know getting to you know nobody in in this day and age of peak tv everybody have you know movie stars are now like hey i'll do a tv show for you know 10 weeks and get paid a, a chunk of change and and, and storytelling is great and all that too you get you get more liberty and more time and space to develop character and story uh but just getting to introduce people, you know, <laughs> in, in that regard. I think of that quote of his, um, did you, were you represented by him? Like how did I you... was, I was Brad Gray's first client. And then no kidding. I introduced him to Gary Shandling and, Oh, uh, and then, and now I'm looking now. Uh, now it's, looking it's, in, it's in Judd's documentary. I was in the middle of, uh, two people that I loved. And, yeah. um, that funeral, Bernie's funeral was taken care of by Lauren and Brad. Yeah, that's uh, that's who took care of that. It was very, yeah. that was a very. I have a I have a Machiavellian type history with that whole thing. But how so? Well, it was just like, you know, I loved Gary, and then the lawsuit happened, and then it was, and I loved Brad. I mean, he was, you know, we, I'm the godfather of his kid, and mm -hmm. um, I've had a couple of people killed because that's what you do. Yeah, when you're a godfather. I put. Oh, I know. Yeah, I've read the book. I've never seen the film. I hear it's great. It's okay. Godfather three is what you want to start with. Great. Good to know. And then just go backwards. You know, there's yeah. also going to be an animated one coming out, which is really Ooh. good. I, I hope you get it. a voice in it, you know? Yeah. Um, you play the plate of pasta. You play the cannolis. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the boat that Fredo gets shot in. <laughs> but, but it's interesting. I had an experience with Bernie and Martin Short, right after the memorial, came up to me and said, you... Bernie was always jealous of Brad because he thinks Bernie thought that you were the funniest person to about me. And I'm like, what? Yeah. Well, I wish I'd have known that. I could have had some yeah. more confidence. My balls would have been bigger. I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and what good does it do you now? Now he's dead. It's like, I yeah. Mean, who wants a dead guy to love you? Yeah. You know. Maybe we don't know, but um, I mean, you know, it doesn't take 10% of the, you know, the, you know, well, so. then it was 20%. It was, that was back in the Rollins and Joffe model. You know the the hand with Woody Allen and and Robin oh, really? and David Letterman and that was a twenty oh, gotcha. percent. So I Bernie didn't, was taking twenty percent of uh, Belushi, Aykroyd. You know when he would just handle his first yeah. client was Norm Crosby, and then who yep, just King lost. of the Malaprops, right? Yeah, yeah. And so he had a good debt. I'm death, and then uh, <laughs> then he also handled Jim Henson. I know the fact that he that Bernie was ground floor on uh, in that like one year of. SNL, The Muppet Show, and Hee Haw. Hee Haw. Like, that's, that, that is, the, that's like the Venn diagram. That's America. That's, that's children. It's everything. Donors, and then everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, I mean, it's Hee Haw. It's, it's Buck Owens. And I love that Roy, show. I did too. And Roy, it pretty, 
Roy. Oh, yeah, what was Roy? Clark. Roy Clark. Roy Clark, yeah. And it had pretty girls in Daisy Duke cutoffs in it. Yep. It, had, it was yep. a country laughing is what yep. it was. 100%, yeah. Popping was, up from like the, the corn stalks telling one-liners, you yeah, know, instead of coming exactly through Exactly the, the same thing. And they yeah. would get like, I think Johnny Cash popped out. I mean, it was like anybody. Oh, yeah. They'd get them. Major, yeah. major stars. Yeah. So uh, you, I know, we, we talked briefly. I was slothering all over you because I think you're so special anyway because I just know it. Thank you. you well, you're, you're, you're insanely talented, you know? Um, uh-huh. I know you I don't even know so. it. That's what makes a talented person. If somebody <laughs> tells you they're a stable genius, I would be concerned. Yeah, um, yeah. Hey, my basketball coach in college used to say he was insane. He was like, I'm crazy. You know, follow my lead. I was like, and I'd just be a smart ass. I'd be like, crazy people don't know they're crazy, sir. He's like, snake, get out of my gym. Like, All right. 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 Yeah. And geniuses go, I'm not that smart. I, I think of big, my secret is just always try to be the dumbest person in any room. And right. then, you know, and then people that aren't in that room just assume you're one of them. And he's like, nope. <laughs> I can be. I'll be whatever you want. How much, is yeah, there yeah. money in it? Is yeah, it, exactly. I can roller skate. Is someone good want. directing? Um, <laughs> so you, I, I want to talk about this because you were uh, hired by Lauren as a writer first, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you yes, came so. out of improv, so you were already performing. So why yeah. didn't he go cast member and writer? Or he wanted to explore the writing thing first? I don't, I, you know, I don't know. I've never asked him. I, I've actually never met him, but I, you know. He, he Jason, like I'm, right, I'm right next to you, but I'd rather not talk to you. <laughs> yeah. No, we just, you always look forward. We, you, you're always watching, <laughs> you know, Godfather 3 and you're just sharing a bowl of popcorn. Um, the, you, you know, the, the way it went down was, yeah, I'd been, I'd been at doing Second City in Las Vegas for, at that point, it was supposed to be like a six month gig. And then uh, this was in 2001 and then 9-11 happened and it was like, okay, I'm going to stay put here. And then my girlfriend at the time, who then became my fiance, then my wife, then my ex-wife. Uh, <laughs> I did Kate that. Cannon. Yeah, I had, yeah. Yeah. It was, it yeah. was good. Uh, it's a journey. It's the, you know, it's, it's the journey, not had, the destination that we've, that we've joked about, you know? Yeah. Um, but she, um, but then she got hired, uh, you know, in August, like that same year. And so we stayed put. And after two years, nine months, uh, yeah, I got asked to audition for the show. Uh, my manager, the guy I still work with, Jeff Chetty over at Brillstein. Uh, I love Jeff. Yep, Jeff. Jeff, and that was since 2003. He repped me and Kay, uh, um, Kay Cannon, my ex. And we, um, I had, you know, been in Chicago prior to that. And my, um, you were doing Second City there as well. I was well? doing Second City, yeah, touring company. Right. Um, and and Jeff Richman, who who was a director, a musical director there, really brilliant guy. Um, is uh, Tina Fey's husband. And Tina was now head writer and, and like Tina Fey. Not not like she hadn't done Mean Girls yet like Tina Fey, but she was like, you know, her and Jimmy were like, you know, you know, you know, uh, prom king and queen of, of late night, you know, uh, entertainment. And um, and Jeff came out when SNL, I think, was nominated for an Emmy and he hates flying. And he stopped in to like, he did like two days of rehearsal with us at Second City in Las Vegas and made the show like 40% better. Like he's just one of those guys that can just go like, what if he did this? You know, it's like, it, he's just brilliant. He just, it just little adjustments with, with these things. And, and he's a good guy too. And really he's a good. very good guy and, yeah. you know, great partner, great, great, great dad, great friend. And, um, and just brilliant, you know, musically and comedically and all that. And he said to me, he was like, have you ever thought about auditioning for SNL? I was like, no, no, no way. Now at that point, I, don't, I can't remember if Seth had been hired, but Seth was the first person from my generation. You know, prior to that, it was Tina and Rachel Dratch and Horatio Sands. These were like, you know, seniors when I was a freshman in Chicago. So it was like, yeah, that was, that's who's on that show. Like not us. And then Seth got on and it was like, it was like, wait a minute. Is that, it's like, you know, when someone broke the four minute mile, it's like, you know, no one had done it for a hundred years and then someone did it in 52 and then, uh, then 40, 40 people did it by 1957. It was like, <laughs> once you saw it, it's possible. But then we opened up our own original show. Like we were doing like archive pieces. We were doing, you know, from like at that point, the 40 year history or something. And we got to write the material. And then Chetty got, Jeff Chetty got told by a few people, um, people, clients of his, like, hey, you should go out and see this show. There's like, you know, there's people on there are good. And then he was like, hey, you know, you, you should audition for SNL. You should put together a tape. And I was like, all right. So. <laughs> We, you know, put a tape together and then sent it there. And then, yeah, in August of 2000, uh, uh, 2003, they, I got flown out to audition. And they had just, 
Tracy Morgan had just left and a fellow named Dean Edwards had just not got picked up. And so, you know, they're both black fellows. So they weren't really like out of the 12 people in my audition, you know, seven or eight were, were, were black guys. And then it was all guys. It was, and, and then it was like me, that's where I re- met Rob Riggle, who was from the same hometown, like literally grew up right near me. Right. Uh, we, and and I'll, I'm like sitting outside talking about Kansas city. He's like, are you done about Kansas city? I go, yeah. He goes, I'm from Kansas city. And I'm like, what? Where? Like, and then we got down to like streets, like 95th and Null. Like, I'm 98th and Null. Like, it was like crazy because, you know, I thought the only place that you came from when you did improv or like sketch was the Chicago experience, but he had lived in New York and right. gone through the UCB program. So it was really neat to, to meet him and, we're, and we've been friends ever since. Uh, and then, yeah, I went in, auditioned at Stand Up New York. Um, Chris Rock went on before me, popping in to do to him and Jeff Ross were coming in to work on material for his monologue for the video movie video music awards, and right. and I had this great moment with him. I just told told someone the story recently. I'm I'm sitting there. I'm waiting. I'm about to go next. And I had had a rum and coke just to like steady my nerves. I'd never done stand up, you know. Like I hosted improv games and stuff like that. But the material I knew fairly well because a bulk of it was stuff that I've been doing at the Second City show. So, it was, you know, that wasn't like I was well off book and all that. And he looks at me and he's about to go on. I go, are you about to go up? <laughs> like, you know, and he's like, he's like, yeah, I thought I thought he was just there to watch, you know, because it's it's like a full crowd. And then Lauren and Tina and producer Steve Higgins and Mike Shoemaker in, in the back, you know, like, you know, like, you know, uh, watching uh, curiously. And he goes, um. He goes, oh man, is it? Yeah, are you about to do your thing? He goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, was this your big chance? I go, kinda. He goes, sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Rock, the place me <laughs> fucking bonkers. <laughs> he goes in. <laughs> luckily, luckily, I mean, you know, you hear stories about you know whoever, you know, Chappelle or Dane Cook or something, you know, going on for an hour. Luckily, he only did like fifteen minutes, and he was he was him and Jeff were clearly, you know, I've asked him in years since. Like, what, you know, what are we doing? And we even said at the beginning, I'm doing, you know, working on material. And then he came off and he walks by me and he looks at me and he goes, hey, they love original thought. And and I was like, cool. I was like, a little late, you know. <laughs> you but know, it's, I, a, I, I, it's yeah. a Zen-like thing to say. 100%. After, it, was, it, right. was, it was lovely. And then the guy's like, ladies and gentlemen, Jason Sudeikis. And then I went up and did my thing. <laughs> and... And, you know, I didn't make the dumb, the easy joke of like, thanks to Chris Rock for, you know, warming up for, you know, for yeah. opening for me. I, I I just, I was just like, my name's actually pronounced Jason Sudeikis. At least that's how my dad says it. Not that you care. How about some social political commentary? And then I just went into this piece that I'd done run for like six months on the stage and just, you know, just, and I know what that did is it kind of gave me my out. I could be like, oh, I ate shit because I had to follow Chris Rock. Well, so that's now, actually like kind of the play. perfect in a way. Exactly. And you had a six month bit yeah. that you'd already rehearsed. So that was, I assume, incredibly written. Yeah. And so was, that's why Lauren would say he's a writer. So yeah. that's, and it that's, was, and it was, it was all about the writing. It was basically, it was based on Rick Santorum, like uh, back in that day where he compared homosexuality to bestiality. And when he apologized, he insulted someone else. And so I play a Senator who like, you know, offends gay people. And then in apologizing, you know, to gay people, he offends black people, then he offends Jewish people. And that, like, and so it, oh, that's it kept, hilarious. You know, well, that's, that's, so, that's right now. I mean, you, he's yeah, canceling himself can, as he speaks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can still, you can still do that and just, you know, not say who it, who it is. And, right. and I know from Steve Higgins after, uh, you know, I, I, I heard it went well, then you got to do the network test and that's basically doing the exact same thing on the home base, you know, like where they do the monologue. Right. Um, and then I went back to Vegas and Chetty was like, yeah, I guess it went pretty well. You know, he doesn't know me. You know, I just, you know, he just, he just hip pocketed me there. And then I get, get called and it's like, Hey, they want to fly you out. The thing about hiring you as a writer. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> you know, like, cause, cause it's like, what I try to say to people is like, it's like winning a gold medal in the triple jump when you are a long jumper. It's like, uh, all right. Yeah. I mean, I guess I jump, but you know, I, I wanted to you know, all right. Uh, and not right. I was being a dick. I just didn't know any better. And then Lauren brings me out there and, uh, and you know, the things you hear is like, you know, he's not going to, if he hires you, he's not going to tell you it'll be some weird oblique thing. He won't ask you anything about the show. So don't worry about that. You don't have to like go on and wax poetic about the show. Right. I sit down in his office on the 17th floor. Excuse me. Mm. Is that your own urine? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just yeah. I'm my I'm my own Brita. That's why it's quarantine, but this is 2020. I you would have told me in late 2019 I'd be drinking my own piss. 
That's the way it is, man. That's 2020. I, I, I had know. a vasectomy, and uh, my wife was insecure about that, so we wanted to make sure there weren't any swimmers. I want to get back to your story because yours is better. But I well, actually drove. Let's see. It, well, they might did, end the exact same because well, that's my, where the turn. No, <laughs> I did a drive-by cup of a sample that I made that morning. I don't think that yours ended like this. That's not how no. you. It's not how you got on no. Saturday Night Live. You know? No, no, you no. Know, filling no. a cup. It's a little different. And I no, said that was, that's the, what they did in the '70s. <laughs> that was the that was when the show it's michael o'donoghue i, I remember yeah. watching <laughs> yeah. it in college when he said here's my impression of tony orlando and dawn if tony orlando was shoving knitting needles into his eyes and dawn is singing behind him two singers and then he pretends he's shoving uh, needles into pretends i have to add that yeah. he shoves needles into his eyes and then he's writhing on the floor like yeah. screaming and then they go to yeah. fade out to commercial i believe it was he yeah. just kept doing it and they're singing candida i believe yeah they broke well, every rule like to the point by the time our generation came around it's like hey we had this meta idea and lauren's like we did that <laughs> like, they did everything did that yeah like you know it, the show is such a you know in reaction to all the variety shows and they were taking the piss and satirizing those. And now it's like, you know, it's like the old guard. There's no other show like it. And so, and he, I think he, and understandably so really loves the tradition and history of that format. And so it, it's kind of like, if you, if you're trying to take the piss out of it, he's a little bit like, mm, okay, like I've seen this by someone a lot better than you good sure <laughs> yeah and he also yeah. will let the host hang themselves if they go this is i'm gonna run everything this week because that's my shot and he goes <laughs> let him let him do it you know yeah go but ahead it's, 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 we're not gonna get canceled <laughs> he also knows how to do it people go come on it's not as good or whatever the hell people always say every few years yeah there's no uh, there's a secret to comedy. Know what, be Lauren Michaels, N know yeah, how to yeah. do it. And if it doesn't it work helps. for a while, it just finds itself. Cause it's, yeah, it's been very special. And you it is. did it's things amazing. on there. Well, you were on a story that I cut you off of. It was your audition. Oh, so yeah, it was, just, well, it's just meeting with meeting with Lauren. And, and I have to know, finish again, my sperm. It, I didn't finish my sperm yeah. sample. You so we'll go, go you know, you please. The, um, it was simply, it was, it was just the bait and switch is like classic, you know, kind of thing where you know, people tell you, don't worry, he's not going to ask you about the show. I sit down in his office and the very first, he's like, how are you doing? You know, I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, um, you know, good audition. He goes, um, you know, so what generation of the show did you grow up with? And I just went blank. I was like, I, I was like, you're not supposed to ask about the show, man. <laughs> like, you know, it, <laughs> I, that, that was that was like the one thing I was told is like not to worry about that. And really, the answer that popped in my head first was Eddie Murphy. You know, like the Eddie Murphy because that's when I used to. That's when I stayed up. You know, you know, I was born in. And you can't say that because that was no, because Lawrence... that wasn't his years. No, that was, that was no. Gene Domanian. You know, right. and so I was like, so then I kind of floundered. I mean, the answer was my the one I grew up with, like when I knew what I was watching was, you know, Mike Myers and Dana Carvey and Phil Hartman and Jan Hooks and Victoria Jackson and, and uh, Nora Dunn, like that era. Um, but I'm blanking and I'm kind of like, oh, God, um, well, um, and, he, and he bailed me out in just the best way. He just goes, it, it, it felt like two minutes that I was stammering and it was probably 20 seconds. He goes, oh, that's OK. I didn't watch the show when I didn't work on it either. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just gently, just you know, and then we made fun of Cirque du Soleil, you know, because I was in right. Vegas, which is you know every other show was that, and he's from Canada, and so we we're just like you know goofing around about that, and yeah, and then I left that, left there, and shook his hand, and then found out later that night, hey, they're gonna hire you as a writer, and I got brought back in, and I wrote for almost two seasons, auditioned for Weekend Update a couple times, and then got in, and in, in like sports terms, I felt like I got redshirted, you know, I got to learn the building and how things were working, uh, right, you know, and. Uh, you know, I got to sort of you know, be mentored by like Tina as uh, on the writing side. And I felt total imposter syndrome. But she was like, if you can improvise, you can write. And I wouldn't have believed that unless she said it. You know, she went from basically being a hero of mine to a mentor of mine, to a friend of mine, to a coworker of mine. It was like, you know, an amazing, you know, journey there. But So um, after two yeah. years, you then were you a featured player or did they bring you right in? As... Yeah. No, they brought me they brought me in at the end of my second year, the last three episodes. I remember calling, uh, getting a, a, a voicemail. I was living on 46 between fifth and six. Kay was out in LA here, uh, you know, trying to get, act, excuse me, acting stuff going. Are you going to throw and, up? 
I don't think so. I don't know what Save that was. Save it for my sperm story because I'll get to that. I'll be getting to that. Oh, great, great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I should. Yeah, You're, so hearing perfect. about Saturday Night Live is probably better. So, so hmm. maybe just. I don't know. I don't well, know. If it, it, well, you know. The, the sperm thing has a quiet ending, but yours is. Uh, I just want to hear what was the first thing you did on there as a performer, and were you a cast member right away? No, I was made a feature player those last three episodes. The very first thing, though, that I did was like, I feel like I got a sketch on my first two episodes, and then the third episode, I got to. I think I think it was my third episode. I got to play, you know, a person asking questions in the writers in the in the audience. I right. had a monologue, uh, and that was, I think it was Topher Grace, and I made fun of his name, Topher, huh? All right, you know, like. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then my fourth week, I got to like write uh, uh, a super fans bit with Robert Smigel, you know, because my uncle, my uncle George was going to do, it was when Chicago was, uh, the movie was nominated for Oscars. And so, you know, George and Horatio came out on Weekend Update and I got to like sit in a room. It was the best, man. Like, I mean, Smigel is like on the Mount Rushmore of, of comedy writers, much yeah, less SNL. He's a, and, and he's a one, he's a crazy wonderful guy incredible incredibly sweet dude yeah. and and he was at the keyboard and i'll be him and like you're me and 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 i was just like pitching jokes and i would just see this i would just, like if i'm he would i'd you know pitch a joke and he'd just go <laughs> and type it <laughs> and i was just like <laughs> like it felt like mike tyson walking by after a bar fight going hey nice punch kid it was like so <laughs> thrilling <laughs> right right he so was... it was a hell of a first month there you know i was like imposter syndrome still existed and i also felt again like i was i remember calling chetty and being like i think i made the wrong choice man because then i went oh for winfrey for a long time i didn't get any anything on the show but i love rewrites i love jumping in other people's heads and that's and the hardest it. part about doing the show is trying to get your sketches on for i've heard from so many people yeah and then but once you get in that moment and you're part of that moment which happened with you yeah i mean I, it yeah. was was that, would you say that was like three years in, four years in? Did it take one season I, or two once you're it took, on it? We, on camera? we got, we got, it, it took, yeah, at the end. So I can't, so Lauren putting me in the cast, you know, he called me on that Friday and he goes, Hey, we're going to move you into the cast. You know, just, just, you know, these next three shows, just write anything you feel like you can score on. And it was just really simple. I said, like, okay, great. Thank you. And he hung up the phone. I was like, thank you for changing my life. You know, like, all right. And then me and friends went to Chelsea Piers and got day drunk and hit golf balls, you know, yeah, like, right. uh, uh, and, um, but it wasn't until the next season, you know, I got to come in with, you know, Bill Hader, Andy Samberg, and then a few episodes in Kristen Wiig. And like that year, the four of us just had a vibe and like, like we, 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 well, just, you're all good people and you're all we, super talented. So we got along, we got along well with each other. We kind of yeah. like, we all had, we all had, we all had different slots, you know, like we all were different in a way, but um, I mean, and it was, and it was, it was really neat to be part of that, you know, generation. And then like Fred and, and Forte were kind of in between Seth and like our generation. So they kind of like, it, it, it was, yeah. I mean, I had the best seat in the house of what I believe is one of the greatest like times of that show. And that's on camera. I mean, our writing staff was bonkers too. It was like, you know, yeah. Mulaney and, you know, Simon Rich and, uh, you know, Jost, you know, like it, it's so it, it's you can't, again, be the be the dumbest person in the room, like, be you know, and just play catch up, like just try to keep up. Like, that's the trick. That's I've I've been so fortunate to be part of ensembles like that, including the family that I was born in, much less the things I auditioned for, you know. And even, you know, I think Ted Lasso the same kind of thing, which I had a little bit more to like, I could help. Yeah, I, you know, I've got a lot to talk to you about that. that. I hope you don't but I want, we, go to we, the sperm story. I'll finish the sperm, the sperm and then we'll take a quick yeah. break because I need to uh, give another sample. But I knew I'm glad you're drinking while I'm telling this because it makes it all the better for you. Um, what did I, I have? I, what did I drink two nights ago? Really? Oh, my God. It's in your yeah. urine. It's like sea monkeys <laughs> in there. I see, you know, brine shrimp Oop. are being brought yeah, back to life. Something. Yeah, uh, they can come out of your penis. I think I'm not sure. I bet. Um, I bet we'll get we'll get you do a fact check at the end of every at episode. Very end, right? I do a whole <laughs> thing of can you bang a brine shrimp, and you have to have a very microscopic penis. It almost yeah, is. It's like, you have a pin dick. I mean, literally yeah. of a needle. Yeah. But uh, what happened yeah. to me was this is just two days ago. I had to make oh. sure because my wife was concerned that I had swimmers because I'm I always thought I was a fertile guy you know I like yep. my yep. my lawn looking good so uh wow Norm, I'm bringing Norm Crosby back so bad so what happened was I 
I'm, are you as lonely as I am right now? It's really no. I mean, a little bit, but I have these kids running around. They, yeah, they, my they, wife's they, they in they the other room, and uh, yeah. two of my daughters. I haven't seen it here. They're coming in uh, in a couple of weeks, so that's good. Nice. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. back to sperm, which is how they started. Yep. Um, exactly. I I had to get it. It had to be fresh. You know, you want it off the pier. So you want? I, mm -hmm. I had the cups. All the I bought from Amazon twenty cups. Like I'm going to do this every day, and hey, I just you never know. You know, it was early morning. I had to take care of it myself. It's like, I didn't like it. It's the worst, but it, I'm doing it at home at least, not in an office. Emailing yeah. the guy, and he starts emailing me back. I'll be there. Come whenever you want, in in quotes. I'm like, oh, no. Yes. And I got the guy if you need him. But anyway, yeah. so, I mean, yeah, you know, just, talk just to me 10 years, like writer, 15 just years. Like if I host an award show, I want this guy on my on my. <laughs> Once we're all back, everybody's going to be yeah. fucking everybody. It's going to be one giant orgy. It's going to be nuts. So I, I'm carrying this thing. I got it in the cup holder in a bag taped up with my name. I said, I'm going to put my fake name for the hospital. He went, no, no, you can put your real name. I'm going to look at it myself. And I'm like, oh, God, what does that mean? Is he going to do something with it? Is he a weirdo? And so I had it in the cup holder. And then I drive there literally an hour after delivery and I, I don't like doing that. And doing it in a cup is just it, sad. It's just sad. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I hand it to him. And I'm always myself. I can't help it. And I like to make people laugh. I'm wearing a mask. There's a guy at the front door of the urology center. He's like a guard with a mask and a clipboard. He said, who is it? I went, well, it's it's, it's Robert uh, Saget. And uh, and then he looks up. And then you know, the mask, the duck mask doesn't cover. And then I said, it's okay. I texted the doctor. So I the doctor comes out and he goes, how you doing? I went, well, you know, there's, there ain't a lot in here. Um, so they start laughing. I said, I, I think it's pretty much full of my tears. <laughs> Maybe in order to give this sample, I'm just crying. I'm just crying. So I think it's mostly tears. Very little semen is basically yeah. what I'm saying. Uh, yeah. And so I, I said, oh, he said, oh, I, I don't need much. I'm like, what? Is he making an omelet? Is this like, yeah. is this yeah, like truffle, you don't, you don't, truffle paste? Yeah, so, yeah. just a, a little dab will do you, is what they say. <laughs> yeah. uh, real cream. So he, um, real steam. So what happened, Norm Crosby. So he uh, he then uh, texted me quite soon after and said, you're fine, but you can have more kids if you want because they are, uh, they do have the activity. So you could draw. Uh, from your inside of your, I don't know what they do. They go in there and get it from before it would go out where it's severed, where the bridge yeah. lifted up so that the boat can't go under. They yeah, could, yeah, yeah. they could get it before it, the bridge. I don't know. It's a bad yeah, metaphor. From the locker room. They exactly the locker from room. off they, the yeah, floor, yeah. which is going to take us to Ted Lasso because you know I'm obsessed with this damn show. You've been very you know kind. That. You, yeah. No, I'm not. I, I well, I am. Uh, no, you but, have been. I mean, you were early on. That's how, like, I reached out and was just thank you for shining your light on. But us. who you know, even like, does that? You're so nice and thoughtful, I, and um, you direct messaged me, and I and I I was retweeting Ted Lasso quotes on your Ted Lasso page. Do you do those, or is there a writer involved that does that? We I, early on through at the beginning when during the run of the show, I would I would look at all of them. I, I would do some. I would you know I, if I saw something that I thought Ted would retweet, you know, like a fun you know story or an interesting story, I, you know, uh, you know I would I would send those in to one of our writers' assistants, uh, Sasha Garon and uh, Matt Kerr. I would just they sort of house those, but then they would send me uh, all the tweets that were written. I'd either rewrite them or just okay them. Well, they're so inspiring. Yeah. We're, I'm going to get into that. And I also have some more SNL questions and one more thing about Bernie Brillstein. So we'll take a quick break. Watch this. Here comes the break. Listen up, fellas. We all know 2020 sucked. It's New Year's. New balls with our sponsor, Manscaped. Manscaped, it's the best in men's below-the-belt grooming, offering precision-engineered tools for your family jewels and helping 2 million men all over the world get rid of hair on their balls. When those balls drop in New York, if they are going to, in Times Square, when that happens, if it does, you want those balls to drop hairless. If you let yourself go in 2020 while in quarantine, Manscaped is here for you to reboot and stay clean and shaved in 2021. That's right. It's the year of the clean ball. Let me just tell you, 2020 was difficult. 
It was rough. We walked around in sweats. I'm still in them, but I've got a fancy shirt on and a tie and a hat. The world has been upside down. But if you're ever upside down and standing on your hands or on your head and someone's in the house like your partner, you want them to see a clean set there, just standing there glistening in the sun. Or if you're just sitting by a reading lamp reflecting off of those balls, all shaved and cleaned up for the new year. Bring in the new year for clean, beautiful balls. Manscaped is here to give you a fresh start in 2021 with their perfect package 3.0 that has all the right tools for the job. Come out of quarantine with clean balls. Thanks to the Lawnmower 3.0, this waterproof and skin-safe trimmer will reduce nicks to your two best friends. And if you only have one, clean that one up. Make that one look nice. Don't feel lonely that you've only got one. The third generation trimmer even has a light to give you the glow up you need in 2021. It's like a disco ball. It's also time to freshen up down there this New Year's. The Crop Preserver is an anti-chafing ball deodorant and moisturizer. You already put deodorant on your armpits. Why are you not putting deodorant on the smelliest part of your body? And for on-the-go freshness, you'll love the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. (laughs) 2020 was awful. So make sure your boys are refreshed and ready for new beginnings in 2021. Clank them together and celebrate. Manscaped even threw in their shed travel bag to keep all your goodies stored comfortably. Speaking of comfort, the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs are also included and are hands down the best underwear you will ever wear. A guy with hairy balls is like the year 2020. Don't be that guy. Say goodbye to that guy and bring in 2021 with not hairy balls. Manscaped can do this and get 20% off and free shipping with the code SAGIT20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code SAGIT20 at manscaped.com. Your balls will thank you. Once again, get 20% off and free shipping with the code SAGIT20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code SAGIT20 Happy New Year to you and your balls, all three of you. Okay, we're back. That nice. was it. And I got my there sperm go. results back, and the doctor said it's uh, minty. So, hey. so It might have uh, been the cup. It might have been the cup. Don't worry you about know, that. No, I didn't think about that. I didn't know if I should wash it out. Uh, I had soup in it before. Mint soup? Yeah, it's really, <laughs> it's really good. Just a dash of semen. Um, so... I'll tell you one quick Bernie Rothstein because we'll go back to the uh, the first segment. And I, I put this in a book I wrote called Dirty Daddy. And Bernie is in the end of the book. He's the death of my father is in the end of the book. And Bernie's in the end of the book. Um, uh, Brad Gray and his uh, wife at the time, Jill, were on a boat with some friends in, um, in uh, you know, the Caribbean. So, and I saw Lauren during this trip and I, I've known Lauren for a long time and I've been auditioned yeah. for the show many times and Dana Carvey made that cut and I, I did not. And Dana did it at Igby's comedy club under the 405. And Amazing. Dana's still one of my uh, dearest friends. He's just a, one of the all time great. Uh, he's beautiful. And I've been talking to, I had Kevin on kneeling on here uh, just recently and he's another, so, yeah. I mean, I, I actually was texting with Norm Macdonald just now. So yes, yes. Oh. I directed. Dirty I have a great. I, I have one. I have an amazing Norm Macdonald story that I love sharing because it's just his spontaneous brilliance that I'll, I'll remember. I'll jot it down. But please go well, hear. I want to okay, hear the I want to hear it. But I'll just finish yeah, this Bernie Brosnan it. story. It's just it's just a Bernie story for you because you knew yeah, what please. he was like. So I'm yeah. in the jacuzzi with him on this boat, a nice boat in in the Caribbean, at at uh, St. Bart's, and it's just him and me, and I have like a mai tai or something, and I'm single. Uh, and I had been divorced, I think, for ten years already, or something. And he, he, and I'm just making him laugh, and he he's laughing, and he's laughing, and I'm smoking a cigar, and I got a mai tai, and I'm single, hitting on the girl that works on the boat. You know, it's really not not a great life for me at the time. But I'm high happy. bar. You got a high bar, yeah. <laughs> I got the mai tai and the cigar, and I'm with Bernie, and he's laughing, and that big laugh, that barrel chested laugh. laugh. Yeah. And he said, if you could do in your career what you've done in this jacuzzi, you'd be set for life. And I said, what, take a shit? (laughs) (laughs) And you're laughing, which is an honor. 
He laughed for five minutes. He laughed. Oh you could God. hear it echoing. And and then Brad yeah. came out and said, what the hell's going on out here? And Bernie <laughs> said, this guy. Oh, my God. Bob. Oh, my God. And he was crying. And it was like, it's, it, it's a threefold yeah. type of joke. Because basically it's telling him that this is where my career's at and I shit in here. <laughs> so. Be careful you don't make a grab. That's not the thermometer on a string, you know, yeah, in the yeah. jacuzzi. Yeah, so to, please tell me a Norm but... MacDonald story because I, I directed Dirty Work, so I um, always had a closeness yeah. with Norm. I'm the first comedian Norm ever saw when he was 17 in Ottawa. I'm 120. Oh, no. Oh, no. You look great. Well, you I know? don't know how. From the, way, from the waist Before down, I've got a fro like you had on What Up With That. Um, I appreciate that. No, that's a... Uh, that's one of my... I, fun, um, that, that's a... That's a, one of the best things I ever saw in my life is you doing the running man and you do it the whole sketch and it's no matter what, it's, it's 10 to 15 minutes, right? It, it's, oh, it's yeah, wall to yeah. wall. It, that was the most fun to do because after we did the first couple, then we would always do it right after update and the whole cast was in it. The, the host was in it. We'd get bonkers, you know, guest stars, but it was the, during my generation, it was the one when the set started to be built on you know during the commercial break the crowd would be like all hyped and then everybody come out there and each everybody knew their role everybody knew their part i loved i love doing that doing that sketch and, well, and the way and you I'll hopped what, into frame <laughs> just it's well, like it's like a kramer entrance. never jumped off anything never dropped off anything you just left like in that. the air and you did it horizontally i i, I, I I'd ask Chris Kelly, our state, one of our stage managers, him and him and Jenna, I would ask where, where's the edge of frame? He'd put a piece of tape there and then I'd just do it. And it was like, and I would, and I would just try to do, make it as convincing. Like I was dropping in out of nowhere. Um, that was the purposeful thing, but that was like, what, what my favorite thing about when talking about for that sketch for me personally is one, how, what a joy it was to do it with, with the whole cast. And, and again, the, the, the electricity or the excitement that would happen in the studio. And Keenan's a sweetheart. It. And it's, and it's, it's oh, Lauren incredible. saying, just let him do it. As, and Lauren loved it. Cause he loved oh, it. I mean, what it. I loved about the original show when it first started and I hosted the show once and yeah. there was a, a sketch that I wanted and we did it in dress and it was, 13 minutes long and and lauren likes that if because it's indulgent and and it's and what up with that is like we know you know what's going to happen i mean it's just yeah so with yeah. what up with that what would happen now you you oh, were in it from the beginning right yeah yeah from the beginning i mean i remember with the first one we did was when gerard butler hosted and i believe it was keenan that wrote that with a fellow named brian tucker a great writer um, the whitest dude ever who's written for Chris Rock, Chappelle, Keenan, like it's, you know, you know, good old boy from North Carolina, uh, the blackest, whitest dude ever. And he, um, and when that dancing, like hip hop, early nineties, hip hop dancing was something that I used to do when I was like one of few, you know, white kids on my, you know, AAU basketball team. Like when I was like the Jim Carrey of my AAU team to make my teammates laugh. And so, you know, and that's a, like, 16 you know you know 15 16 years old and then you go through you do second city you do you know boom chicago you know you, you're on snl you've reached the thing and i just think there's something very beautiful about the like the 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 thing that most people from snl like remember and like and have dressed up you know as me for halloween is that thing and it's connected to that joy of like a 16 year old just trying to make his friends laugh yeah and that's all i was trying to do like and it's like that's why I, I like you. I don't myself. know you. I don't know you, but I just like you because I have the same thing. I am a kid and I yeah. want to make people feel good. And that's what Ted Lasso comes out of. That's what everything you've done comes out of. I mean, we're the Millers. It, that, that is you. You know, that, that is, a, is it a big, it's a big component of you. I mean, even though you're kind of a deceitful guy a little bit in that movie, sure. right? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But still yeah. it's, you're trying to move things. You're a great mover forward of of story but thank you you're just a positive Thanks. we need so much positivity right now it's just yeah, no i uh, that's what i yeah no i'm 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 right there with you yeah i mean yeah we're, we're frogs in a boiling pot like even regardless of what side you're on politically like you don't you don't like the other side and why and are there sides you know we're not know. it's not the red Sox against the yankees and they will kill each other in a parking lot but that's not yeah. supposed to be America, you know. No. I'm you're from Fairfax, yeah. Virginia, right? 
I was born there, but I'm from Kansas City. I was, you know, we moved when I was like six months old. So I mean, I was, you know, born in Fairfax, Virginia, because my folks were living in D.C. But but then so my you dad didn't got drive transferred. at six months. You weren't driving. No, no, I I, I just rode along up in in the front seat, no seat belt, while my dad's drinking beer. It's 1975. No one right. gave a shit. You know, like you know. My like, parents uh, strapped Loggins me to and Messina just jamming. Go ahead, sorry. I opened for Kenny Loggins. That's how old I am. That's great, though. I mean, that's Mr. Soundtrack. That's, that's I mean, uh, that's that was uh, he had all of them. I don't know if Dan, yeah. Yeah, Top no, he Top Gun had not come out because I auditioned for Top Gun to play Goose for Goose. <laughs> yeah, how, what other part would it have been? I mean, right? you know, Mer, Merlin. I don't know, you know, like uh, Meg Ryan. You know, Meg Ryan's part, Goose's wife. Yeah. Um, I could have been her. Man, you could have done that. <laughs> you could do that. You could still do that. You still got those. Have you? Move. Have you? I have a lot. I'm going to go all over the place because that's what I said to my doctor yeah. when I gave him the sample. <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, He's just like, make sure you keep the top on. <laughs> I said, Can't we just do it right here? You'll put on a visor and just just scrape it off. I need. I need. I need, I need intense eye contact, Doc. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to get anything going. <laughs> I can't look at porn. <laughs> they give you magazines, apparently. Back, Not anymore. It's all over. Everything's over. Yeah. It's just done. Yeah. They should actually, in my... Uh, it, they should have just a AI-type head. Uh, like a blowjob machine. Ex -Mac, a blowjob machine of someone... You can make it whatever hologram or whoever you love, whatever model or actress or... Your wife or your girlfriend or a guy yeah, or yeah, a German shepherd, a sheep, anything. And you can just put your penis in there and then that's, it's amazing. It would take 40 seconds unless, yeah. unless it's an ex-wife or an ex-girlfriend. But that yeah, might be good. Trauma. That might be payback though. That's like sex with the ex if it's in a doctor's office and it's not her. I mean, yeah. It okay. sounds like a Jimmy Buffett song. It sounds like a business you and I should pitch to Shark Tank. Yeah, we, we got to get a venture capitalist. This is going to be great. Let's show up there with the money already and go, look, we're going to do this with or without you guys. <laughs> I'm going to take a lot, of, a lot of my savings, second mortgage. I really feel this is the strongest shit. Trust me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a dick sucking machine that tests if you're fertile. Seriously, that's the name of it, too. That's yeah. what it says on Amazon. And, and, dick sucking and it either goes ding or it makes a buzzer sound. It's real, like, it's or, super or, technical until the end. Or it could do a curling. Woo, 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 woo. It could do one of those. That's not bad. It's yeah. positive. So back, yeah. back to positive, and then I'll, I'll, I'll go around the place. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I like everything you've done. Uh, horrible bosses. Um, you know, it's one and two. There was no three, was there? No, unfortunately, no. Because that's, wish a, we had that's an idea. a fun we were, group, right? We were writing it. That's a fun group. That's iron sharpening iron. When, 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 when any of the, when the two of us, you know, when Charlie and Jason were laughing at something I was doing, I knew I was, you know, at full strength. When, yeah. when Jason and I were laughing at Charlie, like, yeah, I love those dudes. Both very, very smart and gave a damn. There was, you know, not, not a drop of cynicism or apathy. That's, I could watch, that's who they are. I could watch those those junket interviews. I mean, it was a joy to do that. And and like with their, you know, each of them, you know, had you know great. I was single during both uh, during the first one, but you know their wives are incredible. Just it, it, yeah, I wish maybe someday we'll start a Kickstarter. But we had a whole idea. We had, we we were going to jump genres. We were going to do a prison break, you know, movie, you know, because our guys end up getting busted at the end. And so yeah, we were, you know, maybe it was um, hubris, but yeah, we 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 brought that out. New Line had the idea to, to release that on like Thanksgiving weekend. And for some reason, you know, families didn't want to go see Rachel from Friends talk about cock rings. I guess they, <laughs> you know, 20, 2020 hindsight. There, there was, you know, well, now they well. do. Now, yeah, it's, exactly. now it's all anybody yeah. wants. A lot of dirty <laughs> stuff's going to come out. There's going to be more yeah. R rated comedies as well as the comedies are going to be all over the damn place. So I hope so. Well, We've they have to be. Well, we're yeah. a mess. And, and that's what's. Um, so, and Jason has become and was always a good director. Even when he was young, he was directing and he's still Jason young. Who? Uh, Bateman. Oh yeah. 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 Absolutely. He's, he's, yeah, he's no, been right. directing. I mean, it's unbelievable. It yeah. shows that he's been directing. So, yeah, no, and I know Charlie's been doing porn cause I, um, mm -hmm. I yeah. filmed some of it. He doesn't know I did it. He was just, 
He was at home. I don't know if that's porn. Yeah, that's that's something. I, I mean, I guess it, it's definitely a keyword, Boyer. I know, you know, on your point. Wait a house, minute. But- what about another business that you and I go in on? And all the famous people we know, we know where they live. Even during right. quarantine, we can do this. With our okay, iPhones, go. we film them having sex. We'll do two different angles. And we put out their sex yeah, tapes. Coverage. And they don't right. need, we need coverage. Yeah. And they don't, they don't even know. Uh, unless you tap on the window and you go, no, no, we need to, we need to get that again. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it's a bad idea. Not, I, it's, I can it's, take it. I feel bad. There's I'm no sorry. bad ideas. No bad. This is a, this, this is no, a brainstorm this is, podcast. <laughs> this is a brainstorm. <laughs> no, no. It's a, it's a think tank. <laughs> okay, let's talk about Ted Lasso. So, what do you want? I, oh, here, let me tell the Norm story before. Let me okay, tell you. Just only because yeah, you yeah, love yeah. it. Only because you love it. And because I know it'll make you think of your favorite Norm story. But, and he's one um, of the funniest people on this earth. Absolutely. So I forget what year it was, but I was in L.A. And I and I think it was 2011. I know it was. And I get asked to do Dennis Miller's podcast. And the guests are going to be Dennis Miller and Norm MacDonald and me. And I was like, yes, 100%. Now, Dennis, you know, I loved. I mean, I, like Dennis Miller and his off-white album, his cassette, got me out of trouble so many times when my dad was driving me to school freshman year of high school because he'd be furious about my grades or furious about something I'd done, and then I just push. I wouldn't want to listen to it, pushing the tape, and by the middle of side A, we'd both be laughing and we got out of it. Um, and and so I have mad love uh, and respect for that dude. And I thought that's how jokes were told, you know. But 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 I thought you know I was just right. like that's what it is. And so now, and then Norm, and then Norm, as, as your taste gets, you know, more evolved and like, then, then my other favorite weekend update anchor, you know, Tina being my third favorite. Uh, and, and so I'm like, yeah, I'll go sit in a room and be Mike laughing for two hours. No problem. So we go do that. And, and Dennis is being really positive and Norm is just busting his balls. And I, and it, I did, I was just laughing the whole time. I've never even listened to it because I enjoyed it too much. Afterwards, Norm and I, uh, Norm's like, Hey, you want to, uh, where are you staying? Like the sunset tower. Yeah. You want to get something to eat? Like, yeah, sure. So we go, we, we go to the sunset tower and we get <laughs> breakfast and he had a fellow that was working with him, like an assistant who basically just seemed to be like the guy that showed him how to open and dial his phone. You know, right. he's, he's like a Luddite in that way, which, which I love and just makes him that much more mysterious. And he was, and we were talking about like SNL and he was talking about, Hey, so my, uh, my kid, I'll do like a bad norm because it just helps. But he's like, you know, my, uh, my kid was, uh, and I, I, I don't, I think this is off the dome. I, 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 you would know better than me how much, like, he just, he does, right? He just goes into punchlines. He just delivers lines, like, like, yes. Or, yeah. Okay. So and, this and is, he'll nail them. He, he will purposely hit is, them. This, that's, I mean, that's like your son, you know, he'll yeah, just yeah, do stuff. Exactly. Like, so yeah. he goes, yeah. So my, uh, my, uh, son was, uh, you know, I, I wanted to show him, you know, like me doing jokes on the, uh, you know, the old SNL show that, you know, you're on. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he goes, and, uh, and I showed him a few clips and, uh, you know, I was like, you know, when I was young and, and, uh, um, at some point he, he, he goes, Oh dad, you, you're telling jokes just like Seth Meyers. And I was like, Oh no, the kid doesn't know how time works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, uh, just, he's brilliant. Yeah. He's brilliant. He so says just, things in an opposite. He approaches it from the opposite way. And yeah. God forbid anybody should tell him, don't say that. You know, as you oh, could see what happened with Dick him. With the, and yeah. OJ and jokes. And, and you know, Dirty Work's a, a funny movie. And it was, I haven't seen him forever, yeah. Uh, no, yeah, and we're working on a sequel is what uh, nice. we're trying to do and put, you know, show what he's like today. That's great. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good Lord. Cause he is, he is a gifted, hilarious person and he's, yeah. he likes to prank me, which is not fun. Cause I'm an innocent. What? Like, like, like how devious, like I was driving a car with him and already laying in it. And we hit a, I hit a pothole. It was Artie's new car, his new Cadillac. And I took out the yeah. tire and, uh, you know, I was driving recklessly and we were up town, New York. And I called a tow truck to get somebody to take care of it. And then Norm comes over and says, hey, this guy that's changing the tire, he wants a, he wants a picture for his kid. He's a very big fan of yours. Hey, sign a picture for him, would you? And I went, uh, okay. So I, I come over to the guy. After he's done, I pay him $1,000 because I got him out of nowhere. I had to go to a cash machine three times because you couldn't get yep. big clumps then. That was before yep. the days of, you know, bookies and coke dealers uh it was it was you know back in uh i think 2000 so um so what happened was (laughs) this guy comes over and he says i don't 
that'll be uh, $900 or whatever it was. And I'm going to give them extra. And I said, oh, and, and let me have your address so I could send your kid a picture of me because I know he's a big fan. And the guy goes, what are you talking about? I don't know who you are. I have no idea who you are. And Norm's on the ground hitting the pavement, laughing his ass off because he's made a full. He did it. When I was directing him, I would say stuff to him quietly and he'd go, and like Entertainment Tonight was there, and he'd go, why am I listening to the dad on Full House? Tell me what to do. <laughs> you know, it's like, that's, there's no winning. Yeah. And he's, no. bri- he's brilliant. I mean, he's, I a, he's a savant. So he's a he's a savant and he's got a voice like an instrument that doesn't exist on earth. It's like <laughs> it's like him and Ella Fitzgerald. You know, it's like <laughs> how do you compete? No, you know, it, is, it is a comedy voice that will not be defeated. Yeah. Mm. So let's talk about the opposite of that. Well, not really. Well, kind of because Ted Lasso is a person and he doesn't not that Norm is not, <laughs> Norm is not a person. <laughs> he's a monster. He's going to be so friggin- pissed at me. I'm glad oh, it's COVID. Dude. He can't come after me. And he doesn't drive, so it works out. <laughs> See? Perfect, but, yeah. But I love him to death. And it will be. That's when I'll love him the most. Yeah. <laughs> in, in can't our wait. Day. When we're we'll going to die together. Royce Hall. <laughs> <laughs> you can come. I'll be alive, just so we can talk about it. Yeah. And you'll bring, you'll bring Fred, who will just have shaved his lip. <laughs> um, so, and Fred Armisen's one of the sweetest people in the world. Holy 100%. fuck. 100%. Jeez, God. My, okay. He was my dad. He was my dad's favorite. It was one of my favorite things. My, he was my dad's favorite uh, when I was on SNL. He goes, Jace, you're great on that show, but I got to tell you, the guy that makes me laugh the hardest is Fred. Arm- is Fred. Yeah. And, 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 I, and I say that because it's not that my dad was like the great Santini or hard on me. My dad's incredibly supportive and, and kind. It's just, I, and my dad has great taste. <laughs> like he just, I'm where's like, yeah, your, no, Fred. Where's your dad and your mom now? They're back in Kansas City, same house I grew up in, in Overland Park. Yeah, and, but they're and both they are, from Chicago. Are they together? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's, for better or worse, cool. right? So death yeah. doesn't part. There's, I there's don't that believe generation. necessarily in that, but uh, but yeah, my parents no. were like that. They were together sixty years, and but, yeah. but they fought. You know, it was like a Neil Simon oh. dialogue. <laughs> Right. Rat a tat tat, yeah. They had to top each other's lines, and it's always the repetition. Why did you say that? I don't know why you thought I said that. I didn't say yeah. that, but and then it always ended with now it's garbage. So, yeah. but like uh, Raymond Chandler or something. <laughs> yeah, some weird. <laughs> I love Perry Mason. Oh, <laughs> such good-looking people on it. That's my mother. She sounded yeah. like some puppet. But um, okay, so here you are, and. Your dad must be so proud, right, of Ted Lasso. Must love it, right? He is. Yeah, yeah. I think he does love it. Yeah. No, he does. He was. Did, I mean, he. You know, I, I was lucky. My, you know, my dad took me to see, you know, Beverly Hills Cop when I was nine years old. You know, like I was a nine year old kid from Oakland Park, Kansas, and I, when I grew up, I wanted to be, you know, a a, a, a black cop from Detroit. Like, you know, like, <laughs> um, and he just, yeah, he would let me watch anything, and so. Yeah, my my sense of right and wrong was probably has a lot to do with watching movies with good guys and bad guys, and my dad getting really mad at the bad guys. Ah, oh, guys, that guy stinks, you know. And like so, and there's a lot of Ted. Uh, there's a lot of my dad in Ted Lasso for sure. Well, he's, Ted, a chat, he's a chatterbox. And Ted has that feeling of you know Jimmy Stewart and you know. Uh, young Tom Hanks trying to cheer everybody on and be positive. Mm. And, you know, just all of the inspirational people that we've seen in movies our whole lives. Yeah. And there are even, you wish people could be like that full time in life, but no one really yeah. can be. But in no. this, in this first season, I mean, there isn't anybody that I didn't tell. And I said, you have to watch this thing. You watch it right now. I was because that was the only positive. I was watching all the, you know, everybody's dying. You know, everybody's getting killed. There are viruses yeah. and all kinds of shit and superheroes or just people. Who's the killer? And, you know, finding Jacob or whatever, defending someone. Right. Uh, sure. <laughs> Hugh Grant. Yep. Hugh Grant. And, but this, this beautiful show was a character that you did. I'm not clear on it. On NBC Sports, you would, you would come on there mm-hmm. being an SNL cast member with a character that you invented. No, it was, you know, NBC Sports acquired in 2013 the rights to show the English Premier League, you know, like Manchester United and Liverpool, like those in on in America. And they were like, uh, they hired this ad company called the Brooklyn Brothers, who were actually two British fellows. And they came up with like, you know, like 
five or six different ideas. And they came to me, I think because of, you know, my work on SNL and they're like, Oh, he, you know, he's, he, he seems like a sporty guy. And I, I played different things. And one of the ideas was, you know, a coach, a football coach coaching soccer. And they had had the character sort of drawn out to be like more of like a, a hairdryer type, you know, like a Bobby Knight, like a yeller screamer, like you go, yeah, yeah, you know, like that right. kind of thing, which was modeled after a character that I had done a couple times on SNL, like in the sketches I feel like maybe Seth Meyers wrote, and that was what was in the pitch. And I was kind of like, oh, that's a good idea, but I think there's a we should do it. Like I, I have an idea of how to play it that was kind of modeled after you know the way some of my dad's you know friends at, 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 you know, buddies bar, you know, because the Southern accent has sort of disappeared from Kansas culture, but it was certainly there when I was a kid. And I remember it fondly that people would just with that little bit of a lilt and they talk like that. And you see it like when, when, with Roy Williams, who was a coach at KU during the nineties or Bill Self, who's from Oklahoma, uh, who's a coach at KU now. And it's just like that, th that little bit of that thing, that little twang. And, uh, and it, sometimes if I've had like some, you know, some booze, like if I've had Jack and like, I get, and I'm, and I'm back home it'll, it'll pop up, you know, lickety split, but we, then I, then I was like, Hey, can I hire, can I bring on two buddies to write? And I knew my friends, Joe Kelly and Brendan Hunt were the ones to do it. Now we had, we had known each other from Chicago, but then the three of us had all worked at boom Chicago in Amsterdam because, and Brendan who plays coach beard loved soccer. Joe loved soccer and football. Brendan also loved football. And then I didn't know much about either, but I, you know, again, be surround yourself with people smarter than you and, you know, right. reap the benefits. And, and so Brendan and I had already established a rapport of like soccer when we lived in Amsterdam, because we played a lot of um, the video game FIFA on PlayStation. And so he <laughs> would explain to me soccer and like the history of the game, which he had just learned himself being a cynic, you know, showing up in Amsterdam was like, what's this game you play for 90 minutes and then zero zero like you know fuck you and then he lived with like eight dutch dudes who taught him about the beautiful game and explained to him the you know the minutiae of it and then when brendan learns something he, he becomes a maven and then he also has this verve this zest for sharing the information with you and then he's also gifted at mapping things so he would explain you know the you know arsenal team and the manchester united team using like the 90s you know, bulls and the nineties, you know, pistons and how, you know, and I'd be like, okay. And that's where, that's what we used as like sort of the comedy set piece. And then I was a little bit more of a knucklehead, you know, and ignorant, a little more blustering in the commercials. The first commercial did really, really well. It did well. Soccer fans liked it. Football fans liked it. Americans liked it. You know, British people liked it. European people liked it. And it got, it went, you know, viral, not in the sense of like, you know, like hundreds of millions, but like enough within that thing. And it was well received as like an actual ad campaign too. And then that afforded us the opportunity to do a second one. And in doing the second one, the story of the first one was Ted gets hired and fired by the Tottenham Hotspur team in three days. And so for the second one, it was like, okay, well, he should have just fallen in love with the game. Like he fell in love with his time in London. He's back home, but he, now he loves soccer in only three days. And that's what unlocked like the idea of like this childlike enthusiasm and optimism right and so it, it evolved to that and after we did the second commercial it did it did well and then olivia my partner one night uh like when we were at dinner was like you guys should do that as a show or a movie or something and i was like oh really i was like and then she had explained to me in in recent months when i started to impress with this and that story came to light because brendan remembered her doing that i had forgotten that was the impetus for that mm -hmm. i started riffing that night of being like well why would he take the job like he probably I started riffing the whole the, the dramatic element of it, like how we end the pilot about that he that he's there because he's his 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 relationship is falling apart at at home. We didn't know about the kid yet because we we're you know, but but I knew at that moment and lives like oh yeah, you started talking. It was like why is he there? Okay, he's probably dealing with the marriage dissolving and in giving it space, and then like a few months later, Brennan and Joe came out. It was like this is 2015, you know, uh, and we sat at our house, my house in Brooklyn, live in a nice place. And we just sort of, we just sort of tried to see if it had legs. You know, we want to see if, what, is it just another five minute sketch? Is it a 90 minute movie? And we came up with the beats of a pilot. And then we came up with like this outline for like a six episode arc. Cause we were kind of modeling it on the British office, right. which I think is, you know, one of the most remarkable things like six episodes, six episodes, and then an hour and a half special. And it just kind of spilled out in only, you know, three, four days. And I would say, 50 to 60 percent of of what is in the show you know uh or at least the pilot is what is in the pilot then it went dormant for a couple of years 
because you know we at Liv and I had kids. Joe uh, created a show that I EP'd called Detroiters on on uh, Comedy Central right. with some friends. Brendan was doing his you know uh, day gigs acting wise, and then Bill Lawrence uh, came into my life because he had a piece of material he he wanted to do like a, a show with, and he came out to New York uh, and we're uh, to you know pitch it to me, and. And we got along really well and that that didn't work out we didn't end up doing that and he said at the end of the thing at the you know we chatted for like two three hours i was like i don't think it's here's why i don't think it's, i don't think it's right and he goes well hey this was great if you ever have anything let me know and it's like you do have this thing about this thing ted lasso and he goes oh i know those commercials and then like three years from that you know here i am you know did so, you come to him with that did or did he go yeah i mean it literally it literally was, it happened just like that. He was sitting in there. He was getting ready to stand up and leave because the thing that we were there to talk about just sort of, I was like, you know, I didn't rope a dope. I mean, he jokes about it. Like, you know, you, I fly all the way out there for you to tell me no, but you know, I just had to talk him through because I just, I try to be specific and deliberate in the choices that I make. I don't want to do anything inconsequential, especially when you have young kids, you know, you, it's gotta be worth it. Right. Um, and, and the investment, uh, and when he, and he was, you know, going to head out, well, if you ever have anything, let me know. And it's like, well, you know, we have this Ted Lasso thing. And he's like, oh yeah. All right. What have you got? Like, we'll talk about it. I love that character. I go, yeah, we'll send you stuff. We've written some stuff and we sent him like this, not a Bible, not like Vince Gilligan. You hear he had all five seasons mapped up, but, right. but I had a good idea of what it was, you know, personally and, and, you know, sent it to him and he was like, yeah, this, this has legs. And then we, then, you know, we were out here when Liv was prepping Booksmart and I was, you know, right in the, I think that's about right, about that timing. And then the four of us, you know, wrote the pilot. Uh, but I knew what it was because I had been marinating it for a while. Like, like, but there are things in the season that were, uh, that we were in the pitch, you know, from Ted's panic attack to, to, you know, the, the reveal of Rebecca being like this, you know, woman scorned and, and how her ex-husband really affected her. Like that was all in the so pitch. It was already, was it already things. set up that you were sent there to fail, that it was like the producers. Mm -hmm. Cause that's, yeah. that's yeah. also an amazing thing that we don't see that often. You know, they, they've done it in a few things where it has to, they're purposely undermining the, yeah. the hero to, to fail. And that's, yeah. Major league is one that, that, you know, as a sports movie, but yeah. people say, Oh, this is like major league. And it's like, it's, it's actually not. If people have watched major league, you know, she's a widow. You know, she was clearly. I like, only you know, saw like a, Major League Nine. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's the best one. This, that's, it's the Godfather Three of the Major League. It is. Know. It's it's with you animals. Know? It was all. It was yes. like, yeah. It was I mean, like, uh, on, what's that farm? Best. George Orwell Animal Farm. It was like that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, <laughs> with, all, a lot of the same allegories. No, it's it's it's, it's a strong strong movie. It, people are pissed but I'm like, you're you're snobs. Uh, no, I'll watch Citizen Kane again. Um, but yeah, you know that you know. It, but it is it was he's being set up to fail that's it, and and but 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 we always knew i always thought i always knew that we wanted to explore every character like we want we wanted to every i i loved the use of small of i would say mini arcs in the british office like right. um and i and i use that as an example that like david brent's arc that whole thing is about him telling finchie to fuck off to feeling strong enough in himself to tell Finchie to fuck off. And yes, you have the ma amazing, you know, Tim and Don love story and that's wonderful. But, but just that, and if you get to lean in and get to know characters well enough, like you have, you, you know, like we have friends that have gone through a breakup and you see them look at the phone and they get up to go take the call and you know how big of a moment it is when the girl's calling and they hit, you know, send a voicemail like that's victorious. And, yeah. uh, and that's worth, that's worth, you know, dramatizing and and you, and know, you and give everyone everyone has a story and it's not yep. two-dimensional that's what's no. miraculous that's what's so that's the hardest work and the best work when and did bill who's a very smart guy did mm -hmm. he did he help hone it as well did he help add dimension oh, to yeah. it yeah i would no, imagine I mean, it's a it, great collaboration because he's kind of like a lorne in a way he knows how to make a show that's what that's what you know and I and I think you could put the best ten episodes of Scrubs against any show that's ever existed on TV. It yeah. really walked that line. It was great use of you know great ensemble, you know great male and female relationships, great female characters, um, you know, and uh, great use of music. And you know it can make you laugh, it can break your heart, you know. And and while it's tonally different, uh, um, in in some ways, not from three from thirty thousand feet, you know, they're they're kindred spirits. But but Bill's also really and much like Lauren, you know, a really good show businessman too. Yeah. 
So he understands the machinations of, of a show running thing. So when we would, you know, butt heads about tone or, 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 you know, a reference or a joke or something like that, like he, he always, he always listened. He, you know, he, he, he always, and it doesn't mean he always um, gave in or kowtowed or something like that, but, but a, a big thing for me was to have someone that understood the format really, really well. Because I think when you make a jump from any format, you know, there's a certain level of arrogance that can come from, if you come from the background of improvisation where you're making something wonderful right away as the Jeffrey Sweet novel uh, book about, you know, the creation of the compass players in second city, mm -hmm. you, you can think you can do that anywhere. And it's anything. And I, and I just don't believe just cause you can sculpt, you can paint, you know, and you have to honor, you gotta, you gotta honor the, the medium and, and having Bill's wisdom and experience was great because, you know, much like with a lot of the soccer stuff, I go to Brendan, I ask for the verisimilitude, like what's the real, and then where do we twiddle the knobs so that it's, you know, it works in Kansas as well as, you know, in, in, you know, London. And that we would do the same thing. I'd lean on Bill all the time for like, okay, what, what's, what normally happens here? What would we do? And he's like, you could, this could happen, this could happen, or this could happen. I go, would this ever happen? He goes, I don't know. It's like, well, let's see, you know, like, and so it's me not knowing the paradigm, but him knowing the paradigm, but being willing to color outside the lines. You know, and so well, it, you're it, doing it, it too, because I don't know what's going to happen to the characters. I mean, you, yeah, you just don't. I do. I know you do. That's what I wanted right, to. Right, you okay. can't tell anybody. But do, no, you I have not know. shot season two, have you? No, we start in January, but we started writing before the season first season came out. And I'm proud to I'm proud to say, cause, and I think you'll appreciate this. I hope is because I think this is, you know, we didn't change anything based on based on people's response to the show. Like we like nothing, nothing shifted from the story we were telling. Uh, you know, we did, we we're not like, Oh, that's heat. That. And we got to follow that heat. It's right. like, no, it's, it's, it is what it is. Yeah, people are responding delivered. really well too. you know, it's like, let's yeah. stay true to your characters and to what you originally set out to do. Yeah. I mean, it's been, it's been remarkable. I, I like, you know, you work at a place like SNL. If, if, if you're, if you're wired a certain way, you can maybe think that like that has something to do with you versus, you know, you're just at, you've just, walked into a place that eyeballs are anyway right uh but here to actually i thought someone would like it i i had no, no I mean, clue. you also went to uh, with apple tv was so smart because it's at the very beginnings of it and yep. and now there are many more signature shows there but they aren't of this tone and this would be called a dramedy which is so stupid when you think about yeah, it because yeah. it's you like know, I, scrubs is, was not a dramedy a, it was a show it's a comma it's yeah. a comma. It's That's not a drama. It's a comma. <laughs> I made a comedy documentary. I called it a cockumentary. Which one? Um, I made uh, 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 Farce of the Penguins. Um, I never saw, oh, it was oh, a about penguin. March of the Penguins. Yeah, but yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. and it was dirty. It was R rated. Sam Jackson narrated it and it had like Hilarious. 60 comedians in it. It was just filthy. It was uh, Louis Black accidentally. Um, uh, takes Christina Applegate. It's all voiceover of documentary yeah, footage. Yeah. Uh, right. t takes her uh, from behind, um, and and I sing a song about he loved her in a place I never did, and it's it's a uh, it's eighty minutes. I somehow got eighty minutes of, and it's like a porn. It runs the same footage of two penguins That's, talking. There's only so much penguin footage. And, yeah, I know. And it's just trust me, I know. <laughs> That would be yeah. your go-to at the sperm bank. We're going to take one more quick break. This is going longer than I thought, but we'll take one more and then we'll, uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up as I give you more accolades and you'll tell me how you, what goes into those little cakes you make. Cause we've never seen you make them. So we'll be right back. This is a paid sponsorship brought to you by BetterHelp. What interferes with your happiness? Is something preventing you from achieving your goals? Sometimes we're self-defeating ourselves. Sometimes doors close and we don't know how to deal with it. Sometimes we have loss. I've been through a lot and I've sought help and I've really achieved a lot for being able to talk to someone. BetterHelp will assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. Connect in a safe and private online environment. It's so convenient. You can start communicating in under 24 hours. It's not self-help. This is professional counseling. Send a message to your counselor anytime. You'll get timely and thoughtful responses, plus you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions, all without ever having to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room. 
BetterHelp is committed to facilitating great therapeutic matches, so they make it easy and free to change counselors if needed. It's more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. The service is available for clients worldwide. There is a broad range of expertise available, which may not be locally available in many areas. Licensed professional counselors who are specialized in depression, stress, anxiety, relationships, sleeping, trauma, anger, family conflicts, LGBT matters, grief, self-esteem, anything you share is confidential, convenient, professional, affordable. Check out the testimonials posted daily on their site. This is not a crisis line. In fact, so many people have been using better help that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. We want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting our sponsor at betterhelp.com slash Bob. Join over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Bob. Thank you. It's the season to curl up, sleep in, and get cozy. I just hope you don't get caught. You can't because of the season, which means you can't go wrong giving comfy gifts for the holidays. And with Purple, you can give the gift of comfort and great sleep to everyone on your list. Purple is a sleep company that's been innovating comfort for over 15 years with their proprietary Purple Grid technology. Purple's best-selling Harmony Pillow is made with their signature grid and provides absolute airflow. It's the perfect gift to help keep the hottest of heads cool. And I got a hot head. Wrapping a mattress in purple, silky, soft, breathable sheets will have every sleeper wanting to hit the snooze button even more. Whether you're working in an office or at a kitchen table, sitting all day no longer has to be a pain in the butt. Purple seat cushions offer no pressure support and keeps you comfortably cool. And for the little ones, Purple's Kids Collection has all the essentials to help them dream big. They'll wake up feeling merry and bright every day, having slept on their super soft, moisture-wicking kids sheets. Your smaller sleepers won't stir at night when they have the cradling support of the kids' pillow, which is made with the same grid technology. It's so important to have a good night's sleep. I have trouble with sleeping, and Purple's comfort accessories make the perfect gift for the holidays. And you get to help your friends and your family members sleep. What a great gift. Give the gift of comfort and great sleep with Purple. Go to purple.com slash bob10 and use promo code bob10. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash bob10, promo code bob10, for 10% off any order of $200 or more. purple.com slash bob10, promo code bob10. Terms apply. Okay, we're back. And I, I you make these cakes. Uh, she's your boss. Um, yep. I'm wondering if something's going to happen and it's going to be a mistake because we haven't seen it yet. Um, I don't know. I don't see it, but I kind of see it, but I don't see it. She's you've, you've softened her so much. You've made her a totally different person and she's coming off of her pain with her horrible ex that flaunts it. And he's yeah. fantastic. I mean, yeah. Uh, Anthony you, had like, I mean, he, he, I he had that like, once I didn't enjoy it. No, no, no. You never had Tony Head? Yeah. yeah. No, I had Edith Head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, she's not bad. You know, no, she redressed makes, me. <laughs> so. Make a great skirt, a nice yeah. pleated skirt, then, yeah, then you know, get top. out of my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so what's in those cakes? You can tell me that. Do we see you? They, ever, are you we're going to see you make one in season two? No. Well, I do. I You see me. Like, Cutting the things. D- dust them, yeah. Oh, at the, yeah, at the dust end of, I think, one yeah, or you two did, or did something you like cut, that. Did I see you cut anything? I don't think I, I did. I can't remember. I can't remember. If, maybe I've cut them. Or I at least placed them in the in the pink box. But, no, I mean, it's pretty funny, you know, getting to you know, do press for it. And, uh, here, you know, I knew this because I asked to try one. But, but that's the best acting that Hannah, who plays Rebecca, does on the show, is making those seem edible. Because they're super dry and super <laughs> light. Like, they're not good. They're not good. They look better than they are. That's the, you know, that's, that's, you know, movie magic right there. And just, and just good, good, strong theater chops. Can I ask you a question? Why can't your, your props person just get a really good one for her to eat? I don't know. 
Great question. But you, you're, you're picked up. Are you picked up for a third season? I believe I read that. Yeah, it's two and three. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. twenty episodes. Then is what you're going to be we're, doing. They, they and they added two more, so we're doing twelve for season two and twelve for season three. You yeah. literally just made my day. You literally I, have made me so happy because it made my mortgage. So yeah, I'm, that's know. really good. This came at a good time with the pandemic. So yeah, do they yeah, prepay? No, it, do they prepay ahead? No, nobody. No, it's still Hollywood. It's still showbiz. Can no, you work it out I'll, that they fight for the off the sue them for the money I know. we're gonna audit well don't do that well then i'll sue yeah. you okay yeah, well like, they're, okay we made no profit what <laughs> it's the most popular show apple tv has uh, yeah uh, it's yeah, bringing it, it, people have to buy it they have to buy yeah. it they, it's not an algorithm they can actually show you the purchase if they don't show nobody shows anybody anything it's, no well they, they, once we're out once this is over we get the vaccine People are going to be showing everybody everything. It's going to be an <laughs> orgy, and everyone on your cast is just going to do it with each other because it's going to be, it's going to be yeah. Showbiz is going to go nuts. You know what it's like. Oof. It's international oh. waters. It's just going to be bonkers. Do you yeah, look forward I, I, to going back there? Yes. Yeah. No. It's it's a. I mean, we had in the makeup trailer we had you know every cast member you know that you know and we probably had 150 people it's like you know uh, you know day players and you know kids and you know right. different you know the supporting actors that on the team and I, walking through the last week i looked at every single person and i knew them all because i had watched all the auditions and you know being like oh yeah that perfect and, and no turkeys no no there no is turkeys. not there is not a sour apple but, anywhere anywhere but i mean but i mean off camera too i mean like no no attitudes no like everybody was was everybody got it everybody was kind like and i and and you know well it starts from the top you know it trickles down into a cup and then you take it to a doctor (laughs) (laughs) yeah if you're lucky otherwise you're just stuck with it you have hundreds of them everybody's talking about that's the truth but i've said this a bunch and it's i think it's the i think it's the truth because it it might start from the top and while i play ted lasso and the show's called ted lasso i really do believe that ted lasso is a vibe and it's like you can't you can't like it, it it rejects you know cynicism and apathy and and like snark like when when a snarky line would be in there and that like that kind of got through in a draft and like higgins would be snarky to nate you'd be like wait how'd that get in there no cut that that's wrong you wouldn't it's do not that the philosophy you know? like, of the show no no it's not and, it, and it's all seen through those amber colored glasses that ted's seen you know like i mean we get super we got you know, during the writing of the pilot, it was the same time that this Michael Pollan book came out called How to Change Your Mind, which is all about uh, how they're using, you know, psilocybin and LSD to help treat people with depression and PTSD and near and people are there ending, the, you know, near the end of their lives. And right. and and I was fascinated with that book and having done mushrooms a few times when I was living in Amsterdam, like just the egolessness that sort of happens. And I was like, that's Ted. Ted is mushrooms. Ted is, Ted is so except he, everything's not orange and he can walk. He can walk. There's that too. Yeah. And the, <laughs> and the Beatles, the Beatles sound just fine. It's not, it's not scary. He doesn't want to kill anybody <laughs> and it, like that. Like, it, but it is, it's, it's like, it's, it's. And so that egolessness from the top down of the title of the show or the vibe of the show, you know, not necessarily, you know, me, I'm human, you know, like I'm, I'm I fuck up like anybody. And, and, uh, but, but it just, it just doesn't allow for, people just gave a damn. And, and, and and we were also really diligent about making sure that it was, we just listened to people's suggestions, you know, like, you know, you know, from the prop guy to the, to the, you know, sound folk, you know, like, isn't that great when someone, when a grip will say, you know, you you say, what do you think of that? And they'll give an opinion and you'll go, Oh, let's try that. Um, And that's what it's supposed to be. I mean, it, it, it's ensemble a, ensemble art's the best because yeah. it's a, it, like if you have to believe in the magic and the alchemy but there's that great quincy jones quote that he said to michael jackson uh, maybe it's apocryphal but it's like you gotta leave space to let god walk into the room you know and it's like and god could be love god could be you know a great idea a great joke you know uh, an interesting camera move whatever whatever it is it's, it's that like, it's that magic stuff it's the yeah. magic dust that goes on those shitty cakes <laughs> But what you're saying is why I just got insanely in love with it. Because where is that righteous indignation? Where is, where is it? We're in such a cynical time. 
Yeah. And I, I think we should be saying all you need is love, but you can't. I mean, Elvis Costello was the most cynical guy in the world, and he wrote a song, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding. And we're living in a world right now where people would go, I don't want to hear that. No, but he's being cynical, but he's not. He's telling you the truth. What's it, Why are you laughing at that? Because yeah. peace, love, and understanding are a good thing. And that's where I'm coming from. That's why I can't wait to get be performing and go out. And I had a yeah. big tour to go do all new stuff and yeah. do special and craziness and spread the division that I felt, try to mend it somehow by, I was talking to Norman Lear, who's a friend of mine and, and he's I'm awesome. Yeah. 98. And, and I said, when I, when I perform, when I'm working, I get to take people out of their lives and, yeah. and there, and he said, no, cause he's Yoda. And he says, no, you bring people into their lives. Uh, and yeah. they're all doing it together as a collective. And that's yeah. the beauty of that experience. And in a film version with a set and what you're doing, you're doing a long movie, 10 episodes. Yes. It's a 300 minute sports film. It, it is. That's we, that's what we, that's the way we looked at it, you know, with the narrative and, and, you know, cause we didn't know if it was going to be released to binge. We, I think, I think Apple made the right move. I was nervous as hell. You know, Bill and I talked about it up to the last minute. I was like, is this good? Will it get lost in the shuffle of just like the negativity of the election? You know, like, like it's the antithesis know. of the election. It is the solution. It's, it's, yeah. the, it's the elixir that we all well, you, need. But, but you know, you got to have that little bit of self doubt. Like, again, I didn't, I thought someone would like, it. I didn't know, you, you know, of course you write a song and you want people to, you know, bob their head to it. I didn't know people would be fucking, you know, playing at their funerals and dancing at their weddings to it. And like, you know, <laughs> you know, putting on mixtapes for new girlfriends and shit. Like, like it's, it's, it, and, and look, it's, it, it's the collective, you know, consciousness of so many people, a couple hundred people, like everybody, everybody's a part of it. it. It wouldn't exist without any one of those things. It wouldn't be what it is with it. And we try to get so many, you know, on camera is easy, but even behind the scenes, we try to get so many of the people back because it's a vocabulary, it's a vibe. And, and I know that there's, it, 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 it'll permeate, you know, even if we only get 60% of, of our, of our crew back, um, because it just, it, it just is. And we, it, we, it, the whole thing is we just kind of got to, you know, serve the show, you know, love, love the art in ourselves, not ourselves in the art as uh, right. Del Close used to say. And and, and and I saw you do an interview and you were saying something like you wish you had more Ted Lasso in yourself that, but yeah. you, you do, you do, I, you I, do. It, you, I mean, that'll make that literally when people, you know, Chetty said the same thing. I'll, I'll share that with you because I have, I've said it's the best version of myself and, and it'll make me cry because. Uh, but yeah. It's okay. No, I cry I, over this stuff you know too. I, mean? I, I cry over it's, where we're at as, as people. And I cry I'm, I'm over trying you. to be the best version of yourself that you can be. Yeah. And uh, we all are going through uh, stuff. This is, you know, this is, we're not even in normal life. And I here know. you were making something where there was already division all over the world. Already, every, everybody's fucking mad about, I don't know what. And, yeah. and the That's show telling, is yeah. a, it's a mantra for a, a, a team being united by someone with a conscience, by someone with a heart, your philosophy of how you make the show is the show. Yeah, 100%. and so that's a gift you're giving to everybody, Jason. You're, I mean, it's you're giving it's given right back to me. I, I, I'm just, I, I literally, I'm, I'm, I'm following my gut, like, and and and, you know, I, I don't know, I, 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 I don't have an awareness of that. It's, it's just, it is, it is what it's supposed to be. I'm I'm so flattered that people we, we get we get you know so many messages like people just saying thank you you, yeah. you know and you know that is like you know that that's one of the neat things of doing comedy that that we I'm certain with everything you've done you you know like like you know in my in my brief career you know like it's you know someone was in the hospital and they're they're what they they watch we're the Millers and or like you know something like that and the that laughter is an incredible medicine and it does yeah. offer, you know, escape and it does offer hope. And, and, you know, Sir Norman Lear is of course correct, you know? Uh, and like to, to, to hear that, thank you. And hear, hear that. I, 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 I'm not, it's not lost on me at all. I know it's not lost on any of us that, that work on the show. It's, it's a, it's a really, a really amazing energy and vibration to be uh, amongst. Well, I, I'm getting chills because it is a because uh, my balls have been out the whole time. But uh, 
That's probably why. Try, yeah, trying to diffuse diffuse two men crying, which is my uh, American native name. <laughs> I know. I was I was ready to go, but uh, yeah. <laughs> my parents were two men crying. That's why they named me. What, what is that, Father? Why did you call? Him? What were you looking at when you gave birth to me yeah. to the Native American mm-hmm. father? And he said, "Why do you ask two, two dogs fucking?" That was the joke. Right, right, that, right, right. I think yeah. two men crying is better. Uh, but it, so is this? You play the church. You, <laughs> churches oh we can go in churches it's all safe it's yeah. all good um <laughs> it's gonna be a buffet but god will provide it's oh so is this your favorite you can't really oh, yeah. say that because you work with so many people that you love you know you've had great experiences yeah. you're part of the snl company which is always part of your life uh is this kind of your yeah. most rewarding thing you've done do you feel i'm not trying to compete it against anything because you always say you invest yourself in something no, no, you I, believe in. Yeah, and it's true. I, you know, I, I haven't done a single. Uh, let me check myself here. I only have done a single gig for the dough. I did. I did one. I did one gig for the dough. The, uh, an early gig when I was doing comedy sports in Kansas City. My buddy Corey got this. This company hired us to do like this corporate. Hey, it's gonna be two hundred bucks. It's you know. 15 minutes. I was like, I could buy a lot of CDs. I was living at home with my folks. I was like, yeah, I'll do that. We, we get there and we, they, they give us these, this wardrobe and we're dressed like, like, uh, Pharaohs, like, you know, so it's like a headdress and, and shirtless and like, like a loincloth. And, and I, this is when I was playing basketball. So like I was in good shape and I still didn't want to do it. And I hated it. And we had to carry in like the CEO, you know, like Paul bears, like, you know, like, like he was Cleopatra. And that's, that was the last time I ever did a fucking money gig. Like everything else has been like, I, there's always been an emotional or, or, or personal reason for it. And, but I would say up to this point, I would say up to this point, yes. But, but I'm also careful to be like, is that because like, like, I'm I'm a boss of it. Like, is it because it's like I don't I have, think like, that, no, that's know, not you. I I, 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 I know, but, but I, I think it's because it's where you are that, in you know? your life. It's where you are. You've evolved. You're an older person and you're young, but you've had a lot of experience. So you have done a yeah. hell of a lot of gigs. I mean, I'm sitting here with a phone book of stuff, and yeah, uh, I, I forget I all that. Yeah, there's a lot. You've done a lot of things, um, and all of them good you're good in everything you do and especially as that pharaoh thing when you carried out that guy oh you've seen it you I, I have it. Oh, I, actually that's what helped me when i needed to get that semen sample uh, i oh, saw that boy. i did oh, uh, 10 10 tire commercials 13 tire commercials for my ex-father-in-law when i was 23 uh for atomic discount mm-hmm. tires and i get paid a thousand dollars to do 13 commercials and they had me on a cash yeah. register with a dollar sign. I'd like to run the way back machine on that, you know. But you're doing something. I don't. I don't want to say the other stuff wasn't at a high level because laughter and the stuff you've done is so entertaining. But this is uh, kind of about the human condition, about what it means to be a person going through extreme difficulty, and yeah, by following their gut coming out uh, honestly and nobly he's yeah. a no he's such a noble man it's just a gift that's what's different that's yeah. why people are thanking you because it's there's I not guess, many yeah. roses in the desert that we're in and if you look at the landscape of everything I, that's streaming it ain't there you know some of it well is great. i mean you know i would challenge that i i think i think there's so much that there's so much desert that we're not that the, it feels like the roses are you know not as ubiquitous as they once were, you know, it, it's, it's, you're, you're it's right. no different I mean, I, than, I've seen some beautiful you know, works that have made me cry, but they're usually a film yeah. and they're not normally, um, well, there are some beauty. I mean, look, there's people love this is us and different shows that hit people in their heart mm-hmm. and it makes you feel positive about right. humanity, but this is a different, it's a different thing. I've never seen since I guess major league 12, which I remembered, I, I saw that also. Uh, that was really good. That was stop yeah. motion. Um, but yeah, but took took ages. It took nine years to make. That's, <laughs> that, that, I don't know if that's true. But they shot no, they shot it on four millimeter. Yeah. It was really, they did it the same guys they did Mr. Bill. Um, but but there's just something about it that um, I I think we all need to aspire to become because you're 
it, kind of you're you're a, you're the character's a gift and you're a really really good man i appreciate that i you know it's it, i think the reason why it's so hard to kind of talk about like you know outside of like what the show means or like you know little 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 you know secrets or like you know you know connecting the dots for people that, that i mean that's fun to do because there's it's it's certainly from the production side uh, a uh, an endeavor in intentionality like everything has a purpose or a reason uh and and that's just i just always thought that's a fun way to play in the in the sandbox and that's something that i learned by doing and taught at second city like okay what's this what's the sketch about okay now what's it about about and you're like you know and that's what i would always ask a director before doing a movie like okay what's this movie about like you know asking ross and thurber you know okay what's what's where the miller's about Okay, it's about a family trying to, or a group of people trying to do this. And go, okay, well, what's it about? About it's about family, it's about love, you know. And and I'm not the first person to ask that question or or anything. But I think the reason why this one is can get tricky to talk about is because it's it's the most personal thing I've I've certainly ever done. You know, like I I know every one of these characters is is based on some part of my view of the world or view of myself within that world, and and just blessed that people, you know, have leaned into it. And I don't just mean the people, the viewers, I mean, the people that play it, the people that have written it, the people that light it, the people that do the sound, like every single person just like leans in a little bit. Um, yeah, it's and, the, it's yeah. the A team. It really is. Do you have, you have multiple directors. Is it like four, mm -hmm. Yeah, four people? Yeah. I think we had maybe we had uh, everybody did two. So I think five, I think we had five. Is it going to be Three, the same four, people? Or are you going to bring some new people in? We have a couple of new people coming in uh, just because of scheduling things. But, um, but, uh, but yeah. And then we have two more extra episodes, which is great. But um, it's so, great. but yeah, with the, um, but yeah, it, it's, yeah. I mean, again, it's like people just brought their a game and, and especially when you're doing that first season, as you well know, having done what everything you've done, like, you know, you're trying to make the invisible visible to people and then they, you know, everybody's kind of trusting you. So now that it, now that it's visible, you kind of, you know, now you just got to make it sharper <laughs> right know, like well, you when you come back you gotta make... it's going to get emotional you're going to be very emotional and then you're going to clap yeah. your hands probably and say okay let's get to work uh, yeah no it'll, it'll, it'll be I, i'm looking forward to yeah oh it's it's and i'm way behind I've, I've this last month has been you know interesting and so yeah i i like the rewrite i, I do all the you know I do all these rewrites and i'm you know, but luckily we, I, the story is all there. Like we know, we know where it is, you know, over the quarantine, I've, you know, I know, I, we, I mean, I always knew how it, how it ended, you know? So it's like, you know, it's three seasons and, you know, then. You believe it's just three seasons. You, you couldn't, yeah. you can't imagine it as continuing. Uh, I mean, that would be insulting to my imagination. Yeah. I could imagine it, but it's not. <laughs> what if, but what if a truck backs up that tells you your imagination could be extended? Oh, you, you, you're talking, you're talking, you know, Gilbert Godfrey. What if I had something in this hand that made you think, oh, it's not you? <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, we're too. talking Apple. We're talking, yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about, you're talking about one of those, uh, like the, the biggest... iPhone 14. Yeah. Um, I mean, talk hey, about what uh, if I, I three thought... trucks pull up, yeah, and, and just yeah. start dropping, uh, all kinds of bags of, of rupees. Well, then I guess me saying that it's only three seasons is a, is a pretty shrewd move. Yeah. It's really, really tricky. It's really, you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll go along with it, but I mean, if you make us yeah, cry bro, really the artist, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. But if you're going out in three, which is magic number in comedy, if, if you are the last couple episodes are going to be so emotional and so amazing that people are going to beg for this damn thing. And you're going to go, you know, it's not Star Trek. You don't want to wait 10 years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's <laughs> just, like, just you drunk know. in a bar. You got George Wendt in it. You guys <laughs> just watching the bears. You should be so lucky. Yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a story, you know, the same way Francis Ford Coppola knew that Godfather had to be three, you know, they had to end on, on a high <laughs> and like, you know, so. Norm McDonald says it's highly, highly underrated, highly underrated. <laughs> He's very emphatic about it. I have one last thing All to right. ask you because I have to ask. It's the only yes, thing I've sir. asked that even goes in this area. Have people been uh, giving, saying to you stuff about your Joe Biden? <laughs> They've been, has anybody given you an interviews? Have they done that one to you? Like, you know, yeah. 
you know, I'm like, sure it's been brought up, right? What what part of it? Like just, just you like, know, like well, Jim's doing it, and he's doing a nice yeah. job, and it's very yeah, it funny very... and demonic. Um, yeah, that you know, you did an amazing Joe Biden. Um, thank you, thanks. You yeah. did. I mean, so, thank what, you. What if they? What if Lawrence or Jim? What if they had a dueling one where they were, you know, Joe Biden of dueling past Biden. and Joe Biden of Joe Biden of now? Yeah, I mean, you know, um, would you fly back got, from got, London in the middle of the fourth episode of the second season to, 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 work, to Joe work Biden? With Jim Carrey? Heck yeah, man! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like like Jim Jim's like I'm I am forged by you know his his early film career. You, you know, it, it's like yeah, it's, thank it's, God it's, I had the it's opportunity. Un, it's unbelievable. Like thank God I had the opportunity to like perform it out of myself. Otherwise, I'd be you know you know stealing him left and right you know like you know when you when you do your influences who is someone that you saw early on like in your stand-up that in retrospect you're like oh i was doing blank for like the first hundred shows do you have anybody oh well rodney was a, a, a big influence on me and i found yeah. out holy crap I, that, that set that i did was his timing you know yeah or, yeah. or don rickles i would mess with the audience and he later became a, a good friend or yeah. richard Pryor. you know i would uh, he was like i mean that's who i wanted to be I, I wanted yeah. to be him and break boundaries. And then I became friends with him. I was in a movie with him. You know, that's drill. incredible. You get to be yeah, with somebody no, it's, that's it's the, it's like the nuttiest the thing in the world. The fact that the second to last time I got to play Joe Biden was when Eddie Murphy hosted SNL. I wanted to go to that show so bad. It was the Christmas episode. And Liv was like, do you want to go? I was like, ah, I don't want to just be a hanger on. Like it's always jammed to the Christmas episode. I'd been gone all year. You know, I hadn't played Biden because I was in London and Woody Harrelson had done it and Mulaney had done it, I think at that point. But I was like, and then I get the call. Then, then it's like, Hey, can you play Biden? I was like, yes, hundred <laughs> percent. Like I get to be there. I get to be on stage doing good nights. He, that he gets to say, you know, you know, special thanks to the special guest. I think he says Jason. I think he said Jason Sudeikis, much like the person that introduced me when I did my audition. Uh, and I, who cares? I was like, okay, Dad, that's how we say it now. It's we're we're, we're the Sudeikises. Um, and like, I mean, that's that was like, an amazing episode. That was a groundbreaking amazing. episode. He was. I I wanted him to host during my ten years so bad, and it came real close when Power Heist came out, and I and then you know I at the fortieth. Uh, I was dressed up and my what up with that thing. I had just received a lovely compliment from Bill Murray and I, I felt charged up enough. Chris uh, Rock, who I'm, you know, had become pals with uh, over the years, uh, was talking to Eddie Murphy <laughs> and I walk over and, and I say, I, and I and just feeling the energy of the night, I walk over and I said, I said, Mr. Murphy, my name is Jason today because I work on the show for you. I know who you are. I go, I just want to thank you for being here. This show, um, wouldn't have existed without what you did. Like, you know, it was in, it was in a, a, a tricky spot back then and you, you carried it on your talent to back and it's so neat to have you here. And, and uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to meet you. He's like, thanks man. I appreciate it. And, and then I said, then I look at Chris and I go, and you are, you know, and, you know, and then Chris laughs <laughs> and then I, and then I walk away and then I come back and I go, Hey guys, Mark Landsman, because we all have the same business manager. And then one of the main, I, I, I fuck with my man, business manager all the time. <laughs> the part of the reason I'm there is because I thought I was going to maybe meet Eddie, you know, Murphy at like, you know, the Mark Landsman cookout or something like, you know, but he, he doesn't have these. I thought, you know, I didn't know. I was a dumb, dumb Kansas kid <laughs> thinking, you know, we all get to meet each other at some point. So it was, it was like one of those nights. So then to be, you know, on the stage as him, it's, I, I yeah. Cause I wanted to be Eddie Murphy when I grew up, but you can't, you know, no one's going to know that you Richard Pryor's in your spine and then you do enough reps and it moves on and it just moves through you. And it's part of your essence. It's part of your yeah. DNA versus you, you know, you know, being a parasite. It's just, no, now it's just an influence. Now it's just a, a guiding voice like in your head when you're feeling good. Well, Eddie is also a person that taught me a lot in, about confidence on stage. Cause yeah. and Chris would come in, Chris Rock would come in with Eddie at the comedy store and I was hosting there for eight years. I would go do a gig. Oh, wow. And that, so I was there uh, when I was 21 and Amazing. I was there for all of it. Right. So I was there the week yeah. Eddie worked out raw. So I'm in the main room at the comedy store. Eddie comes out in a blue leather suit. And yep. he does about an You're hour. He's the leather suits. He's, He's like, do I go blue? Do I go purple? Literally, <laughs> literally. Because the next week he wore a red one. I'm not sure if yeah. it's the other way around. I might delirious. be wrong. Delirious is was, the red. Raw was, was purple. But, but he had new ones. It was almost a yeah. Nehru. And he didn't have it open all the way. Um, it. So it was just a couple buttons, I remember. Because that's the first thing I look at in a comedian. <laughs> is their solar plexus. So he came out and, God, he's like this 
knight. He just looked like this amazing Lancelot. And he comes out yeah. and audience goes crazy, does the set. I watch the set very carefully. Audience goes crazy at the end. And one week later, he came back. And I knew, because we all knew who was working out where, that he didn't really go anywhere. He didn't do the improv. He didn't do Laugh Factor or anything. He, I don't know. Maybe he did some club. Maybe he flew back east. I don't think so. I think he was still in L.A. And he came up again on a Friday night again. And I was hosting. And I brought him out. And he was in a dip, it was either the blue or the red, the opposite, uh, leather. And he was always very... You know, very official. Thank you very much. Does not overly talkative, especially when he's on stage being introduced. Hey, so uh, you know. Uh, anyway, <laughs> does the set? It's about an hour and fifteen minutes. He fixed everything. He had fixed what was already what would already been anybody else's best hour and a half, and yeah. literally for five minutes when he left, it's when the pounding is bigger, like ten times more at the end than at the beginning. Yeah. It was, and I went. Holy shit, that was amazing. And then yeah. he was, he knew it. His eyes were smiling and he was like, you know, like, very good, sir. And yeah. he was always very kind to me whenever I would see him. Um, very yeah. kind of quiet, but then he would laugh. You know, he yeah. would do the laugh. The laugh wasn't fake. It was no. like, because he, he wanted to be the Beatles of comedy. And I think, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, Which is anyway. a cooler move than wanting to be the Elvis of comedy, in my opinion. Why not yeah, be you don't want to, those dudes? Yeah, all fat, shoot the TV. What good is that? Nah, that's a bad look. No, come on. You know, you don't want to be let me be those guys. Harmonies. That's that's jumpsuits. Jumpsuits are not the answer. I don't. No, think. they never. They never will be. I don't. I'll, I'm on record. We're on record now. Why you don't know? you do like, the me? whole season in the what up with that uh, outfit of Ted Lasso, I mean, and then just I mean, combine all your art forms? <laughs> that would be like know, the worst just, manager in the world. <laughs> like if, who are you with? Uh, I'm at uh, uh, Brosty Entertainment at, Partners. Uh, who who handles the heat you? Productions. You know, <laughs> like you know, Skipper, <laughs> skipped it. Uh, someone Skippy, whatever. I don't know. Well, I can't wait to see more Ted Lasso, and I wish you uh, neither a, a good end of Quarantino, and uh, that, that life is onward too. and upward, and a lot of a lot of good stuff, a lot of happiness for you because you you give out a lot. And uh, I appreciate that, man. Yeah, we 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 all have it in us. I, I I think yeah. Let's 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 all you know be or make the change we want to see in the world, right? I know it's cliche, but it, no, that's know. what's great. That's how I'm trying to. That's why I'm doing this podcast. I didn't do it. I started last year, but didn't really go out with it until suddenly we're quarantined. Now I'm at home with a yeah. soundboard, but I'm I did it because people were so angry. And yeah. I just went, I'll just do this because I want to, and I sometimes call people that are not as much, but I call people that leave messages and see how they're doing. But most of the time it's yeah. people that I respect and love and, um, and want to talk to. So thanks. I'm sorry we uh, did so short. I know you wanted to do four like hours. I'm really sorry. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're done. Oh, all right. Okay. I mean, all yeah, right. I mean, well, we I'm, could do... I'll, I'll, uh, I mean, we could do another I season. I mean, you're you're only doing three years of Ted Lasso, so I'm already robbed. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the, you know, who knows what happens? Who know, you know, I, I'm just I'm just telling you that story. You know, the, 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 you know. the story is that it ends in three seasons, and you know, if again, I think something magical could happen. So there could be gold bullion, maybe you know, Krugerrands. Yeah, no, there's Krugerrands, uh, bitcoins, yeah. edible bitcoins. Um, <laughs> I don't know what, like but you're, gold you're coins around, uh, yeah, Yom Kippur, you know, or Hanukkah, uh, right? Yeah, the, so the, that was, yeah. so, so you're not a Jewish person, right? No, although Sadekis, I was told in Yiddish, means righteous woman. A rabbi told me that. So, have, wow. That's really? Yeah. Like, I, yeah, I was at a Brooklyn Nets game. And uh, this fellow came up, he came up and, and like, your last name is Sadek. I introduced myself, Sadekis. You know what that means? I think he said in Yiddish. I, it, where, I, I would love to be corrected on this, but in this may have just been one guy. And he brought up his, his son. And he goes, son, um, would you say that your mother is a Sadekis? Yes. Would you say your grandmother is a Sadekis? Yes. May I introduce you to Jason Sadekis? And the little boy looked at me and goes, what? <laughs> I'm like, yeah. And he Maybe broke it down he for me on a napkin. Is it possible that your 
dad had sex with that kid's mother and grandmother. So that's why he's a sudeikis. He did look a lot like, he did look a lot like me. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. Little mustache, you know, not too little, not, not very little. There's like a full, full mustache. I mean, he was like, so the mustache stays, mustache stays, but the rest has got to go away soon. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just sort of, yeah. Have you found a safe way to start? Because it's really hard right now to start. Like 30% of production money is going into COVID safety, right? Yeah, they've got that all figured out. That's that's. I I just worry about the the jokes and the story and stuff like that. I I, you know put that's something you learn at SNL is like you you put your trust in the in the people that know what they're doing. Like you know. Yeah. You just kind of like until and you know maybe that's just Midwestern gullibility, but but no one no one. No one blew it last year, so I I, I just I, well I, you're I also an es- you're an essential worker, so I think Ted Lasso is going to get the vaccine first, and then yeah. it'll just go down. Not me, this- unfortunately, <laughs> like literally just yeah. I was like, oh well. I, no, yeah, you have to be in wardrobe. <laughs> oh, it was the frontline workers won't believe that it's Ted Lasso. Yeah, I'm going to need Fred's razor just to make sure it's all yeah, perfectly and, and all lip. dialed in. It's always good to keep in the middle compartment of your rent a car. <laughs> He's gonna. I, he'll never hear this. Maybe he will. I don't know. But he'll. He'll be like, Jason. It, it's kind of. I. I didn't like that you said that to people. I don't want that. It's kind of personal. Like I could take like, the soundbite my... out, and because his manager is my manager, because we're rep by the same oh, company. Sarkis. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's funny. Tim Sarkis has been managing me for a really long time. And yeah. he's a uh, legend. He's one of the nicest, most wonderful people. And until the past few years, I didn't know who he represented. And I would say, I'm interested in this. Oh, well, I handle him. I'm like, oh, yeah. well, okay. So that's nice. And like, he is one of the sweetest. He's yeah, he's yeah. one of the best. Um, no, I, he, he, yeah, I would see him at SNL like every week. You know, that, that's one of the things I miss about that place is, is, is just, the circle like of, of people I would see on a, on a regular basis that you just, you know, you just, you're happy to see them when you see them, you know, right. um, is a, it's a great hub. One of the all time great hubs of just being able to be there. This is one of the joys of, you know, living in New York too. It's going to, it's going to come back and the world's going to come back and you're, it will, big, I believe what you're contributing. I'm telling you, this show is at the top of the food chain. So thank you. Thanks man. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll be sure to pass it on. Uh, it means a lot to all. Pass of us. it on it really to everybody. Is. Go up to every single person, all the 150 yeah, people. Time. And, right. say, Thanks for Ted Lasso. and the Brits will Thanks. go, who? And you'll say, yeah. Oh, he was on uh, Robert Saget. Sorry. You know him as Robert Saget. <laughs> <laughs> Just tell him the guy that played the asshole in entourage. That's how they know me in England. When I Perfect. played there, that my fans were people that wanted me to be misogynistic and a, and a douche. So, I don't believe in being a douche because vinegar and water just, you know, Norm Crosby you know what I mean? missed. You know, it's just so nice to be here in my room. Here's my Norm Crosby story. I, when I worked at uh, Second City in Vegas, we, we used to do these, these, I used to get asked to interview people. We would do these things where I'd interview someone on stage and then the rest of the cast of four other people would, would do the improv based on the, on the, on the interview. So I, like I interviewed Sheena Easton who, who was doing a show at the Las Vegas Hilton. Well, I had done a couple of these and then Norm Crosby, uh, because they, they had one of those, like those conventions where, you know, you had the cast of leave it to beaver, you know, back when residuals were stinky doo doo. And so they would sign autographs and you get a picture with lumpy and you get a picture with, you know, uh, you know, Tony Dow and, and whatnot. And Norm was being honored. Norm Crosby was being honored there. So I interview him and I do my research and do my due diligence and then uh, Shelly Berman is there, and Shelly Berman is a you know you know famous you know curmudgeon and also Second City alum. He comes up to me afterwards, and he goes he goes hi, my name is Shelly Berman. I go hi, Jason Sudeik. It's, it's an honor to meet you. He goes, you're not much of an interviewer, are you? I was like, wow, <laughs> oh, as advertised. <laughs> but then, but but then. But then I'm just remembering this. Then Norm, uh, Mr. Crosby, came to see our Second City show, and he brought with him Gary Gary Owen, you know, uh, the the voice from Laugh. Yeah, Band. Gary Owens. Gary Owens, and then also Joanne Worley uh, came to see yeah. the show. And at the end of the show, we're 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 like, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for seeing the show. Uh, and I'm doing the outro. I'm like, uh, we have. Um, we uh, thank you so much. We want to point out uh, some some uh, you know some special guests. Uh, you might know uh, King of the Mount props, Mr. Norm Crosby, and he stands up. Thank you. And then and then I say, and who here 
remembers the show laughing and then literally from the dark theater goes i do <laughs> she really talked like that people need to google joanne worley she uh, had uh, the kleenex boutique commercials and she funny. i did i i did drowsy chaperone on broadway so i was oh, nice the, yeah did you ever see it no, but I know, you know, but I know it's, what it is. I didn't you know couldn't. you did Broadway. That's incredible. I did it a couple times. I'm pretty. I was yeah. in hand, hand, uh, hand uh, to hand? God, hand to God, the the the, the one. violent one, not hand of God. It's the puppet. Gotcha. It's Stephen Boyer yeah. with the puppet. So I yep. played the a Lutheran minister. Oh, nice. Uh, at the end, it was a really amazing show. So you would have loved it. I mean, it was I. It was quite demonic. I love. I love, I'm, I love Broadway. I haven't. I haven't had the. You know, my mom's a big theater person. You know, my dad was Bruce Springsteen. My mom was all musicals in her car. Your Broadway. dad lived, was did, Bruce uh, Springsteen. Yeah, for uh, just did, a couple of years. Yeah, well, your dad the was. Album, yeah. No, but oh, no, so he just the, did the River. He just walked into his yeah. life was Bruce, yep. and then some other guy came in after the River tour. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, and that, then was Bruce. Then he was Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, he looked, and and it's all image. My dad was a little heavier. He doesn't look as good in the jeans. And they're like, hey, look, look at this son of a gun. And and that's <laughs> now that's Bruce Springsteen. It's the same, yeah. It, well, my mom was this. Roy Orbison. No shit. I don't know what she saw that? in my dad. But, yeah, <laughs> well, she's blind. Probably nothing. Oh, that's oh. what it is. What? Oh. I met him at Letterman show, and I went up to Roy Orbison. It's similar to your story earlier uh, about saying the same thing to uh, Chris Rock that you had just said to Eddie Murphy, kind of, but it's not like that at all. But, I, but uh, Roy Orbison's there, and my daughter was three and I had her with me and I, I went, Mr. Orbison, I just want to tell you it's Bob Saget. And I, it, I'm so honored. You're just one of my favorite people. And I, and I just, I love everything you've ever done. And then he's thank you very much. And then I went to the person next to him and I said, I just want to tell you, my name is Bob Saget and you're just one of the best people. And I just like everything you've ever done. And I did it and he starts laughing. And then I go to the third person. It's a very small green room at the old letterman across from where, uh, fat where Conan was, and um, to, yeah, and and it was it, it he just started laughing so hard, and that's, that's the gift. So great. That if I made him that's, laugh, because he was you know one of the greatest that ever uh, lived. It's so. the best. It's the best making your heroes laugh. Like if if like because it also means that they catch your vibe. That like you know because it's a nerve joke. It's like it's like how dare he. But then they it's like he just he knew he like he like you delivered it perfectly. Like oh this guy's totally joking <laughs> like and like he just is i mean I, I i love those uh type of jokes like that yeah lauren would always talk about that like you know chevy's jokes were all about norm you know like like about nerve like he's the kind of guy that would be at the classroom as you heard the teacher walking down the hall and the last second he'd sit down you know that's ty webb that's fletch you know it's like those, right. that style of kind of like you know it's also a little bit of like truth to power in a fun way you know, it's yeah. like a subversive way to like take the piss out of someone that you love. And because you love them, that comes across. And so they know it's not mean. Who's the biggest hero you ever met? I mean, Will Ferrell's Besides... one, Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks is one. Um, um, you know, Eddie Murphy, as I said. Ellen. Ellen, uh, Ellen uh, is someone that I always had tremendous respect for. Um mm -hmm. And to make her laugh and to be, you know, to get the guest host her show was was huge. Letterman, you know, yeah. to be to to do. I think I did. I think I was on his show in his final week. You know, um, that's wonderful. Yeah, to make to make him laugh. And whenever Olivia would be on the show, he'd always make fun of me, which I knew was him. You know, being sweet. I like, yeah. Can't believe he's dead. So crazy. Twenty twenty. Letterman, rest in peace. What? <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Why, Jesus? I, I, I'm the practical <laughs> joke guy. You don't do that to. I'm sorry. I'm He's sorry. like my hero, and we drop it here on this podcast at the very end. Yeah, just at the very, just be like, wait, Letterman died? When? I don't know. That's a thing. I do that to Olivia. He did all the time it. He thinks he did it the Oscars that time he hosted, but I don't think he did. He did <laughs> no, the Oprah. That's iconic. That's it's iconic. Amazing. He's David. Yeah. He's supposed to go do that, but he also, yeah, you want. know. I met him when I was a kid at the comedy store and he was dating yeah. my cousin and she since died of really? cancer and, and he was dating her. And I said, uh, he said, yeah, you're funny. He was one of my first MCs when I was like 21. And cause I'm a hundred, I'm an elk, an elm. I'm something with an E. Uh, I'm, I'm an elephant <laughs> but anyway, but he, he, um, 
I said, uh, you're dating my cousin. He went, Joyce. And he went, oh. I said, you can fuck her if you want. And he just, because it was wrong, he just laughed out yeah. loud. And I, I did his show like 13 times. And um, yeah. I say like 13 because the 14th, I don't want to count. But he would, yeah, I would yeah, always yeah. tell him Unlucky stories. 14. I would tell him a story and say, this is true. And he'd go, I don't care. Just tell it. <laughs> he said, I don't give a crap if it's true or not. And that's, you know, he's, there's only one David Letterman and there was only one yeah. Johnny Carson and there's only one, never, yeah. one Ted Lasso. Cause yeah. Bill Murray, yeah. Bill Murray's another one. Bill, Bill Murray another one. is, I just love right. the thing I saw him do the, uh, With Jim Jaramish. Yeah. It was, was that Sophia? I, oh, no, no. That's that was Sophia. Sophia. Hopefully. Yeah. That was Sophia. Yeah. The from, Jim Jaramish movie. Three. He also did uh, the Jim Jaramish movie with uh, Adam Driver, and that's worth seeing oh, I also. Seen that yet. Yeah, I haven't seen it. The, 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 here's, here's, you know, and this could be, you know, you know, in, in basketball, we try to leave the gym on a make, you know, like, like, you, you, like comedy folks try to leave on a laugh. Yeah. This is, this is my, this is my nerve joke that, that, and this is, I, Lauren asked me, I, I did the warm up for SNL. Like, I, you know, I was there in the cast for eight years. I think I did it like at least six of my years. And I did it every week. And I, again, I, I, do I didn't know old, that. Yeah. I would just, and again, I'm not a stand up, but, but he, but Lauren was like, it's good. You're good with an audience. And like, it'll make them, you know, warm up to you in sketches. Like it's good. Norm used to do it. He, you know, he's like, you, you should do this. And right. I was like, okay. And I would do like, you know, just sort of tell people what's going on. I do, you know, old jokes. Uh, and, uh, and so he, he asked me to do it for the 40th anniversary. Like the forty, that big, that big old stinking oh, show. That's so, so in the cool, crowd, Jason. No, it's not. It was a nightmare. I said no. I like because like, the I, audience I like, is every star in it's, the world. It's Jack Nicholson, Keith Richards. It's I mean, but also who's in the crowd? Spade, like Chris Rock, Chappelle. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, Louis C.K., Sarah Silverman. Like, like have Spade do it. He'll crush. He'll like. And he's like, no, you do it. You do. You were so good at it. And I was like, fine. You know, you can't say no to him if he asks you three times. It's, it's 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 some deal he has with God or the devil or both of them. And so I get up there and do it. <laughs> and 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 I'm going through my normal shtick. And I literally nobody's listening. It's like I'm doing a corporate gig, you, you know, or it's like the Golden Globes. <laughs> and and I and I and I'm on the mic and I and I look. I literally say out loud. This is why I name check. I go. I go. Uh, uh, Keith Richards, Jack Nicholson. I think if you guys stop chatting and sit down, maybe people will follow along, you know? And I look dead into Galifianakis's eyes and he is crying at how much shit I am eating. And then Lauren comes up on stage. <laughs> Lauren comes up on stage and he goes, would you like me to try to get everybody to settle down? I go, yeah, would you please? And I'm like, look at him like, dad, I told you this was going to happen. And he goes, okay. And he steps to the mic. I go, hold on, man. Let me introduce you. And he goes, <laughs> he laughs and I go, okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, let's, let's get it up for the man. The reason we're all here, uh, if, I know you don't want to listen to me anymore, but here he is the one, the only Mr. Dick Eversall and Bill Murray is walking right past me in, 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 in front of us, like the lip of the stage and just looks at me and he just goes, <laughs> 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 it's like, and I was like, that's why you take the gig. That's why, I mean, Lauren laughed really hard and he said his thing. And then I did like one more joke and got the hell out of there. But I was like, to get a thumbs up from Bill Murray after burn and you know captain you know captain showbiz was was like work yeah that you were that's but mount rushmore you know there yeah it was it was what an it was an incredible night it was nuts to well be i guarantee to you have you heard from lauren with ted have you heard uh mm -mm. No, nope. he doesn't make any money on it. Why? Why? You know, it's, he knows it's like, he knows he knows it's modeled after him. He's he's you know it's like Doctor Evil and Ted Lasso. They're all that's like you know. <laughs> Which was Mike uh, doing Dana. Yeah. <laughs> right, we all exactly, know all yeah. the stories, right? Super meta. Yeah. Oh God, uh, in heaven. But yeah, no, I don't think he has Apple TV. You know, he's an Android guy. <laughs> he gets free Samsungs delivered for his kids. <laughs> I wanted to, when I hosted, I wanted to do a full house sketch and have, um, a, as Mary Kate and Ashley switch twins and have, uh, Chris Farley and Chris Elliott be the great. Uh, Ashley and Mary Kate. You'd cut to it and yeah. it'd be Farley with a wig. You'd cut to the other. And he, he just said, I don't think people will know the show. And then since then he has, every time I see him, he goes, I have to apologize again. My kids don't stop watching it. I had no idea. And instead, I tried to get a sketch on that Fred Wolf wrote where I had, I was a film critic who rated things with how many squirts of diarrhea I had. <laughs> so I'd give it, I'd give it five thumbs up your ass for diarrhea. And I, I couldn't 
stop laughing. And it was 13 minutes long. It was just one of the, and the new, it was from the 40s. So the newspapers are twirling, you know, five squirts, you know. So it was, it didn't make the show. Like, go figure. You know, know, it made this one. Yeah, this, you know, that's people, nice being the boss, right? This is it. This is me. I just hit stop. (laughs) Well, thanks for, thanks for uh, talking. And, um, Absolutely, man. Thank you for. I mean, this is. And again, thank you for you and the missus for shining a light on on the show early on. You were an early adopter. Oh, I'm gonna go nuts weekend, when it comes so. on again. I'm gonna. Yeah. I'm gonna hit all of my virtual, all my virals. So, uh, Merry Christmas. Uh, Thanks, man. You too. Happy New Year, and and here's the next year in every way. Yes. You know. Yes. So yep. uh, have a great one, and uh, thanks. Wishing you and all your loved ones all the very best. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. All right. I'll talk to you. Take care. Well, that was Jason Sudeikis, and you know that because he just left. Thank you guys for listening to this. That was uh, really special. He's just, damn it, he's great, right? Such a good person. And you got to see this Ted Lasso. If you haven't seen it, seriously, what a damn good show. And what a wonderful guy. So this is the end of this episode. Really, Bob, how can that be? It went by so fast for those two hours. And rate, review, subscribe. You know what to do. Give it all five stars, Michelin. That's three. That's the three stars, the max on that. Give it six stars, like a hotel that you can't go to yet. But you will in 2021. So here's, as we're winding down 2020, another episode um, with a wonderful person uh, and funny as hell and big heart, Jason Sudeikis. And uh, I'll be here. On the next episode of Bob Saget's Here For You, Uh, don't forget to subscribe, follow, whatever you do, wherever you get your podcasts. Apple, you know, Spotify, Stitcher, Twitcher, Flubber, Floby, Zipper. If you get your podcasts off your zipper, just pull it down and take it on out and listen. Don't take it out. I don't even know what that means because some people don't have. All right, then. You guys be well and happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Lifwanza, and Happy Quintessa. Uh, I'll talk to you next time on Bob Saget's Here For You. Uh, stay well. Stay well.